Yes, sir. Concur, madam. You can. Bujwal Knowledge City, the part of MIT League of Colleges, driven by a single-minded focus on imparting focus quality, on education. quality education. MIT BKC MIT Institute of Pharmacy established in 2006 with a mission to develop students socio-technically. The institute has the institute maintained the has quality maintained the right from the establishment, from the establishment as it reflects as from it the accreditation and various awards and various which awards college has which achieved. MIT IOP is the first NBA accredited pharmacy institute in Nasik region. MIT BKC Institute of Pharmacy has been approved by AICTE, PCI and is affiliated to Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University. MIT BKC IOP offers full-time courses in Bachelor of Pharmacy, Masters of Pharmacy and PhD. Institute stands for its excellent, well-lightened and ventilated ambience with range of facilities like classroom which are equipped with an overhead projector, speakers, smart board, etc well-equipped and spacious laboratories which provide experimental learning experience. State-of-art pilot plan simulating the pharmaceutical industry with range of equipments for formulation, development and evaluation. Institute has separate instrument room having range of sophisticated instruments as per the need of industry and research work like HPLC, UV, FTIR, etc. Heart of Institute The library, one of its own kind with open access, great ambience and various national and international book collections to give great learning experience. Institute is also a well with gymnasium which is equipped with a number of professional electronic and manual universal fitness machines along with indoor sport facilities and music room. Campus also has an amphitheater for social gathering and expression of students. The institute believes that the quality of faculty member and their commitment to excellence is the core competence towards its development. With this thought, institute have more than 50% doctorates, 200 plus publications, 5 patents, one copyright and 16 book publications. Our students are encouraged to take part in national and international competitions and events as part of their curriculum. To add feather on hat, we have Ms. Archana Kapse, Air 3 in GPAT 2019, Mr. Aditya Darare, Air 1 in GPAT 2014 and Mr. Parag Mehta, Air 15 in GPAT 2010 who have qualified national level exam GPAT with dignified ranks. MIT IOP has signed 8 Memorandum of Understanding that is MOU amongst them are Japanese Industry, Asahi KCI and Malaysian University Technology Mara. MIT Institute of Pharmacy provide a platform for expressing students and showcase their hidden talent through Antaranga and MIT Utsav annual social gathering. Success comes down to you with appropriate attitude, effort and focus which is certified by various achievements which institute has received. Best Magazine Award by SPPU Champions Trophy at National Pharmacy Week Award for the Best Research Paper and Presentation 
बेस्ट कॉलेज अवार्ड बाय स्टूडेंट डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड एस फॉर स्टूडेंट वेलफेयर एक्टिविटीज इंस्टीट्यूट हैज ऑल्सो बीन ऑनर्ड विद हाइस्ट रैंक प्लेटिनम बाय ए आई सी सर्वे for its outstanding linkage with industries for consequently 2 years which surely strengthen the institute and students to survive in this brave new world of technology Bujwal Knowledge City Institute of Pharmacy the place where your search ends Good morning one and all myself Dr Rani Kankate welcome you all for a national level online seminar on recent development in drug engineering for pharmacy learner and professional organized by IQAC sale and department of pharmaceutical chemistry mumbai educational trust institute of pharmacy bujbal nalis city nasik it gives us immense pleasure to welcome chief guest of today's seminar dr manohar chaskar sir dean of faculty of science and technology savitri bai phule pune university honorable dr shefali bujbal ma'am the chief administrator of bujbal knowledge city respected dr sanjay shishagar sir principal of Met Institute of Pharmacy, Bujbal Knowledge City, Nasik. Met Institute of Pharmacy is making 30 years of excellence with the generous support and and under visionary leadership of Honorable Sri Chagan Bujbal Sir, Sri Samir Bujbal Sir, Sri Pankaj Bujbal Sir, Trustees of Mumbai Educational Trust and respected. Dr. Shefali Bujbal, ma'am, the Chief Administrator of Bujbal Knowledge City, the institute started its journey towards academic by excellence in 2006 and is approved by AICT, PCN, and is affiliated to Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. Met IOP is NBA and nac accredited and is honored with highest platinum rank in cii survey for industry institute interaction by aict the institute stands in the band of 76 to 100 pharmacy institute across india in nrf survey 2020 med institute of pharmacy have various courses like B pharmacy, Pharm D, M pharmacy in pharmaceutics, pharmaceutical chemistry, quality assurance technique, and pharmacology. It is also a SPPU recognized PhD research center. With the collaborative beginning, MET is redefining the system of education to meet current need of market, even in a pandemic situation of. covid today's seminar aims to integrate life science and chemistry with the engineering principle coupled with the basics of animal experimentation cell culture technology and drug target identification accordingly recognizing this we emetians are exploring development in drug engineering with different aspects through our today's eminent speakers with this i would like to request convener of today's seminar dr dinesh rishi patel head of department of pharmaceutical chemistry to give brief introduction about today's event over to you sir okay thank you good morning one and all i dr dinesh rishi patak convener of today's one day national level seminar on recent developments in drug engineering welcome 
चीफ गेस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर चास्कर सर डीन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सावित्रीबाई फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी ऑनरेबल शेफाली मैम चीफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर विज्युअल नॉलेज सिटी एंड प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर संजय शिरसागर सर अवर सोर्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टुडे वी विल हैव ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरक्ट विथ एमिनेंट स्पीकर इन सेशन वन वी विल इंटरक्ट विथ डॉक्टर शरद वाकोड़े सर हु इज प्रोफेसर एट डेली इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस एंड रिसर्च ही विल डिस्कस द टॉपिक ऑफ in the second session the second session will be graced by dr mala parab ma'am she is assistant professor at school of biotechnology and bioinformatics at dy patil team to be university navi mumbai she will discuss the pre preliminary function drug drug screening using cell technology in the third session mr manoj damle assistant professor at srinath college of pharmacy aurangabad will enlighten us on novel approaches for drug target identification today we are honored to have dr saskar sir here dean science and technology savitribai phule pune university as a chief guest for today's seminar i am thankful to him for sparing his valuable time for us sir we are very keen to hear from you on this occasion on behalf of my department department of pharmaceutical chemistry and iqac of the institute i am also grateful to honorable shefali ma'am for her gracious present dr sanjay sirsagar sir for giving us opportunity to organize such seminars so i appeal all the participants to discuss your doubts your queries with all the eminent speakers and grab this opportunity to lift your research aptitude at a higher level welcome once again and thank you all thank you over to you ma'am okay thank you sir now i request our principal dr sanjay shishaga sir to present the keynote address uh, yes thank you ankara madam uh, respected chaskar sir dean science and technology savitribai phule pune university our today chief guest uh, honorable dr shefali bujbal madam chief administrator bujbal knowledge city nasik uh convener of today's program dr rishi patel coordinator dr sonone sir dr kankate madam and all uh, delhi delegates participant who are attending this program through online mode i welcome you uh, uh, at med institute of pharmacy for today's program uh, drug discovery and drug engineering has become an important tool in the current pandemic situation uh, as we all know that currently we don't have the promising treatment for the covid-19 patient so that is the recent example which indicate the need of development of a new drug molecule uh, which will be very much necessary for the patient though we do have the vaccination which is the prophylactic part but we also need a uh, drugs who are which are effective when the disease is been disease occur to some individual so we need to have a new drug molecule so that that's the recent example which indicate the need of a uh, drug discovery and the drug engineering we as a pharmacist uh, we are known for innovation we are known for the development and discovery and as a faculty member as a academician i think we must take an initiative to involve actively in the development of or in the discovery of a drug which can be the lead molecule for the development of the formulation so keeping all these thing in mind uh, we have decided to go with this topic of uh, drug discovery and drug en engineering for encouraging the academician to participate in drug discovery process and i happy to share that for today's seminar there are more than 600 participant participants have registered to get the knowledge regarding or to update themselves with respect to the drug discovery and drug engineering so that speak about the interest of the academians toward this particular issue so i hope the seminar will be the feast for every innovator or the scientist 
to upgrade it himself and it will definitely motivate them to participate in the drug discovery and um, drug engineering so i again welcome you all for this webinar and since i express my sincere thank to dr chaskar sir who is also from the chemistry uh, branch and uh, he will also guide us with respect to the drug discovery and drug engineering so thank you very much and welcome all thank you sir for your precious words for being our motivational support to conduct such programs and event for well being of students now i request dr sandeep sonawne to introduce today's chief guest dr manohar chaskar sir over to you sir uh, thank you ma'am uh, good morning respected dignitaries and dear participants uh it gives me an immense pleasure to introduce the chief guest of today's function a respected dr mg chaskar sir dean faculty of science and technology savitri bai phule pune university sir has completed his phd in chemistry at university of pune and post doctoral studies from nagoya university japan as academic and research achievement sir was visiting scientist as nagoya university japan and hanover university germany sir has completed three major research projects as principal investigator funded by ugc and sppu sir has published more than 40 publications in various international peer review journals with more than 400 citations also sir has one patent on his credit under his guidance two students have completed uh, their phd and two students awarded with a mphil degree currently six students are pursuing their phd under his guidance there are several awards on his credits respectively as young scientist award in 1997 best paper presentation award in 1997 and baburavji golak award by pune district education association in 2000 there are several awards received by the institute under his leadership includes mama saheb mohal trophy for the best college best college award to anna saheb wagire college uttur in 2004 to wagire college saswad in 2007 baburavji golak college sangvi in 2010 and first prize winner on the university level and district level jagar janivansa by government of maharashtra sir has participated in more than 30 national and international conferences and organized more than 10 national and international conferences as coordinator and convener the various administrator positions chaired by the sir includes member management council savitri bai phule pune university in 2020 and 2015 member boe and senate savitri bai phule pune university in 2018 member faculty of engineering pune university in 2011 member science faculty pune university in 2011 member board of studies chemistry pune university in 2010 member academic council pune university 2010 sir was director of central assessment program science university of pune in 2009 sir was member coordinator of nac peer team bangalore in 2018 and observer under cas ugc amritsar punjab Sir also has huge experience of working on various statutory authorities of UGC. Sir was assistant joint secretary of Pune District Education Association in 2013 and is a member of governing council of Pune District Education Association since 2006. Sir was the president of Pune District Sports Zone in 2013. So with this brief introduction I welcome respected Dr. Chaskar sir on this online platform. Now I request respected Chaska sir to inaugurate the function and guide us. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, good morning, one and all. It is a great pleasure for me to inaugurate this function digitally, and I am declaring that I have inaugurated the function firstly. Okay. Should I continue? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six,
Should I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, respected Shepali Bujbal, ma'am, administrator of Bujbal Knowledge City. My friend and dynamic principal, Dr. Sanjay Shirsagar, sir. Eminent speaker, coordinators, Sandeep, and convener, Dr. Dinesh, dear participants. Amity Institute of Pharmacy, Bujbe Knowledge City, Aragon, Nashik, Gahan by Mumbai Educational Trust under the visionary leadership of Chagan Bujbal, sir and under the guidance by Dr. Shepali Bhujbal, ma'am. First, I congratulate MIT Institute of Pharmacy, Bhujbal Knowledge City, for the organization one-day national level seminar on recent development in drugs engineering. I know the dynamic principle Dr. Sanjay Bhujbal, the BOS member of Saitubai Pule Pune University, he is an academician, always helped to Saitubai Pule Pune University to develop the syllabus. And he gave a quality wise input in the board of pharmaceutical in the Saitubai Pule Pune University. If I put in front of any question or any information one within two to three days, immediately he can help us and give that required information to university. And that's why I said the dynamic leader, Principal Sanjay Sisagar, sir. See, in the connection, the today's one day national seminar, the current situation is COVID pandemic. The virtual platform provides us opportunity for interaction amongst the experts and the students. The field like drug engineering has become an important tool to develop a newer drugs in battle against COVID-19 and other such diseases. The drug engineering is an advanced drug design process involving the use of artificial intelligence. It's a new branch in engineering. It is helpful to our develop more specific drugs. Also, data collected in the experimental and easily convertible even to human drug design. So in today's this national webinar, I'm not going to talk on the research also drug designing, how to be, do the research, how to enhance the research, what type of the engineering part involved in this pharmaceutical through the engineering faculty. But instead of that, because see, all these the topics will going to listen by the good, our eminent speaker today is uh, Dr. Sanjay Bujbo, uh, Shirsagar, he organized. So the speaker gave the good information regarding the subject, the drugs delivery, how to engineering part involved in it. So I'm not going to touch to the research part, but what the research need, what the student or the faculty member, they want to do research, what do they exactly need? What type of the capacity of, they built up the research? To the students, five important things are needed. In Sanskrit, we spoke about the five qualities. If in Sanskrit, we say the Vidyarthi as the students. So, Vidyarthi, Vidya means knowledge, and Arthi means desire knowledge. The one who desires the knowledge, that is, we call in Sanskrit as the Vidyarthi. So, today we spoke about the five qualities student must have. So we should possess the that five qualities and try to cultivate, characterize 
and quality wise enhanced. So what are the five qualities? So in the Sanskrit, we can say the five qualities. The one first one is Kaka Chesta. Second one is Bakodhan. Third one is Shwana Nidra. Fourth one is Alphahari. And the fifth one is Ghratagi. So I will explain one by one the all these uh, five qualities of the student. If you student adapt all these five quality and then student definitely uh, in future will become a, a good researcher. So the first one is a kak chesta. So kak means crow. Chesta means efforts. So kak chesta means efforts of crows. So all of you know the story. Uh, very, uh, I mean, our childhood, all of we learn the, the story of the crow. The, I'm not going to detail of the in the that story of the crow. The crow was extremely, I mean, uh, the crow was extremely thirsty and uh, was flying around looking for water. So he saw the one pot of the water, but he can't drink that water because the water is at the bottom. Then uh, crow, crow thinking, what to do? Immediately in his mind, a smart idea. So what he did, he started the, from his big, he started the pebbles, tiny pebbles, and put in that pot. He continuously taking efforts, put the small pebbles in that pot, then water comes upward. Then when the water comes upward, Pro kept working hard until water becomes harder uh, up and twitch its thirst and quench its th thirst. It means what Kachesta refers the patience, then hard work. These are the two things. So I request, not the request. I tell this, give the message to the student. The student should do the hard work and keep the patient. If they want to some achieve, they want to do good research, do to the good research, find out something innovative, the patient and hard work, the two things, this quality is important. So we can learn from this crow. Second example, second qualities of the student, that is a Bakodhan. Bakodhan means intense focus of crane. Again, the one story of the crane, you know very well. The crane stood on one leg in the water and he just observed, waiting for the big fish. Okay. Meanwhile, the small fishes swims around the crane very freely. But the crane focus only, but intense only, the big fish. He wait, patience, and only intensely focus on the big fish. If he pick up the small fish, then he lost the big fish. And so he didn't touch to the small fish. He allowed the swim the small fishes around him. It means similarly in our life, focus on the important things. So we should allow the small thing pass by. Be not distracted with the small thing because in our life, so many small things are comes and they try to uh, distract. Disturb us, for example, of some interpersonal matter, some health issue, some economic crisis. But don't disturb due to that. You just only focus intensively. What want you achieve? Then definitely it will get something uh, a new one. So we can we should learn from this uh, bako. Then the second quality, the third one is Sean Nidra. So everybody knows Sean means dog, Nidra means sleep. Shawn Nidra means a sleeping dog. Sleep the dog. See, one important thing, if you see or observe very well, the dog is asleep. But when the, near the dog, any object come or pass any object from the dog, immediately he can open his eyes. What it indicate? It's alertness. So I want to say here, the student should always alert all those who want knowledge 
in life and want to pursue same some qualities how to practice of alertness because in your surrounding so many things good things try to adapt alert from that good good things in the environment and that will helpful for your future then the next qualities of the student that is alpahari don't take the uh, meaning same alpa alpa means small and the hari ahar means the food it means uh, alpahari means student uh, uh, take the small food reduce the food otherwise the tomorrow said the, the dean of the saitribai pule university said the, the reduce the uh, food quantity don't do that this don't uh, take the same meaning of that instead of you think that is the we have the variety of ahar it means a uh, tongue tongue related to the food then ears sound then i uh, can see the beautiful things beautiful panorama see the beautiful people then uh, nose uh, a good sense let's see all these the sense so what students should take so each and every you give so many input to send through the this sense to the your mind so select the some specific thing, things what you want and that things only sent into the your mind so don't send send all things in your mind otherwise it uh, go inside your uh, mind only the garbage feel and wanted thing feels so don't do that okay it means the whatever the good thing the quality wise good thing sense and send to your mind definitely the choosiness that is very important and uh, this indicate from uh, this quality the word alpahari and the last one is that is the grah tyagi grah tyagi grah means a home tag means give up in our earlier days i mean in ancient days the the student uh, live from the home and go to the ashram they can stay there and uh, learn something gain the knowledge that is in the old days but now i don't say the uh, live from the home but only this grah tyagi means come out from the comfort zone live from the comfort zone and then you don't have the uh, pain no pain no gain and once you uh, learn all this technique definitely the, it, it is uh, good for uh, your the uh, i mean uh, good for your uh, all these uh, categories with you with the students important so what we learn from this the from karchesta we learn that is the efforts of the crew the bakodhan we learn the focus of the crane the now shan nidra we learn the alertness of the dog the alpahari giving right input in the sense and the grah tyagi come out the comfort zone i think when all these five things once the student adapted with him definitely he will develop his research mind and once the student develop in research mind then student know what type of the do the research then student think what the society need then student think what type of the research what type of the problem because in the research either it's engineering or pharmaceutical or science this is a different okay this is the next step but earlier stage the topic of the research what topic of research you choose otherwise i did in the ferrites then silsagar sir uh, sir doing just only change the metals and will do the continue research on that so that is not a research so what student think student go to the society what the pharma industry want what the society want how much tablet how much composition how much doses they think all this engineering part they think all this a formulation part and then supposed to uh fix our the problem and you can focus intensively do the research definitely in future you will go to the researcher either teacher or the student hopes uh, in future this uh, pharmacy mit uh, uh, is going to uh, organize uh, such workshop one day national workshop they uh, they will uh, uh, it's a good opportunity to all the student so uh, i am not taking much more time i congratulate to uh, sanjay chisagar sir chapali ma'am 
because they are giving the opportunity to the rural student using such a, 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 a dais that the student learn from the various eminent speaker. Again, I congratulate both of and thanks for giving me opportunity in front of you to uh, speak a uh, few words. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, thank you, sir. best wishes on behalf of Saito Bhai Pule Punine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, respected uh, Chaska, sir, for your valuable and motivational words. Uh, now, uh, let me take uh, this opportunity to vote thanks for this uh, inaugural function. So, on the behalf of the principal, Dr. Sanjay Kshisagar, sir, Mumbai Educational Trust, Institute of Pharmacy, Bujbal Knowledge City, Honorable Trustees and Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Institute of Pharmacy, I take this opportunity to thank respected Dr. Chaskar sir, Honorable Dr. Shepali Bujbal ma'am, and all the delegates who are present for the inaugural function of this national level one day seminar on recent development in drug engineering. I once again thank you all and announce that the inaugural function is over. Uh, thank you respected Chaskar sir and uh, respected Dr. Shepali ma'am. Now I hand over the session to my colleague thank Professor you. Chaskar to start the first session of the seminar. Thank you. Thank you, Sanam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Good morning, one and all. I, Professor Mahindra Khairnar, heartily welcomes respected Dr. Sharad Vakode, sir, as a speaker for the first session. On behalf of MET Institute of Pharmacy, Nasik, welcome, sir. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce respected Dr. Sharad Vakode, sir. Dr. Sharad Vakode is presently working as a professor at Delhi Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, DIPSA, Government of NCT Delhi, through selection in UPSC in 2001. Sir has completed his PhD in pharmacy from Department of Pharmacy, SGSITS Indore, and RGPV Bhopal. MPharm from Birla Institute of Technology, Ranchi, and BPharm from NDMEP's College of Pharmacy, Nasi. Sir has received Young Scientist Award grant from Department of Science and Technology. His area of interest for research includes designing, planning and synthesizing new organic molecules of therapeutic interest and its biological evaluation. He has supervised six PhD students, 44 MPharm students and currently he is also supervising six PhD and four MPharm students. Sir has published more than 75 publications in national and international journals and he is also having the 25 years of teaching experience. He is associated with various professional associations like APTI, IPGA, SPER, AWP, APSC. He is expert in various committees of AICT, PCI, Ayush. Sir is also member of academic council, Deep Saru. DOS for Central Universities of Rajasthan, Hamdard University, SGB University, that is Amravati University, IGNTU, Amarkanta. So, with this brief introduction, I request Sir to enlighten us on the topic Recent Developments in Drug Engineering. Please, Sir. Thank you, Karnar, Sir, for a uh, nice introduction. I'm not that uh, big person. I'm like all the faculty members who are present or attending this webinar, a small person from the Maharashtra. And it's my pleasure that you people have invited me. It's an honor to me that you people are invited for this <clears throat> one day national seminar on recent developments in drug engineering. First of all, I would like to congratulate my dear friend, uh, Dr. Kishir Sagar, sir, uh, for giving me an opportunity to, for presenting this topic. Uh, and today's chief guest, uh, Professor Manor Chaskar, sir, Dean Pune University, uh, respected uh, Dr. Shefali, ma'am, 
they have given the vision of this seminar webinar as well as the uh, work what met is doing uh, in the present scenario so i also thank dr raj patak sir and sonone sir kankate madam karnar sir and all the organizing team for organizing this wonderful presentation over here we webinar over here for the faculty members as well as research students uh, from all over maharashtra as well as uh, it's not now maharashtra it is limited to maharashtra it is international national level you can say that because of this post covid era and because of this technology okay so they have already given the engineering part as a uh, mentioned in the title itself so we people are also using this word engineering in the pharmacy field and because of this technology itself we are now visible throughout the pharma world okay whether it is from the district nasik properly from uh, maharashtra state or from the perspective of indian scenario pharmaceutical scenario also okay so as far as the indian pharma scenario is concerned we are all know that india has a prominent role as well as growing presence in the global pharmaceutical market okay so it is the largest provider of generic medicines globally and occupies about 20% share in global market okay so india is considered as the rank 3 worldwide for production by volume and 14 by value okay value we are slightly lower range because we produce the drugs with a e proper economy with low cost uh, techniques we are producing the drug and it is because of that it is affordable to the all categories of the people throughout the world okay so that is the strength of indian uh, pharma market okay and it is the, india is the only country with the largest number of us fda compliant pharma plants okay so such a huge number more than 262 uh, us fda approved plants are available in india and because of that what happens us government has special attention towards india and they have they had to open uh, their main office in hyderabad also okay so it is proud thing that us uh, in beside usa they have opened their uh, one more office and that is the only india okay so india is having more than 2000 who or gmp approved pharma plants okay and uh, 253 european uh, edqm type of approved plants okay over here okay. and we are having more we are producing more than 60000 generic brands across the therapeutic range okay and more than 5 Hundred different APIs. Okay, so this market is very prominent, and today's uh, seminar or webinar is also based on this aspect of chemistry aspect. So, bulk drug synthesis or bulk drug formulation plant, bulk drug. So that is very important nowadays because our Prime Minister, Honorable uh, Narendra Modi ji, as well as all the governments are planning to focus on indigenous things. Okay, so. Uh, skilled india as well as their indigenous products things uh, we need to follow and that is how we are trying to reduce our dependence on the china market and this chemistry people all these researchers or the pharm uh, faculty members over here from the all the pharmacy background we need to concentrate that in today's session itself there are two more a uh, resource person who are working or um, emphasizing on how the uh, synthesis or drug molecules can be uh, selected or screened and identify uh, identify that particular molecules because that is very much needed in present scenario because we are we were earlier dependent on the china for production of this apis and now the indian market has developed uh, so nicely that we are trying to reduce our uh, dependence from on the china market and from that point of view the uh, present role of all of us okay as a researcher 
okay as well as uh you can say as an academician also is very very important thing okay so whenever we are doing our education system in a, at our undergraduate level graduate level or post graduate level we are producing a good quality pharmacist and because of that only okay we are able to maintain our standards in the world pharmacy okay and day by day our expectations from the indian pharma industries increase so ultimately the expectation from the indian pharmaceutical institutes also increased and from that point of view our today's topic uh, is very important okay that how animal experimentation is important in the drug discovery engineering process okay so whosoever is the uh, source of material whether it is from the mineral origin animal origin or synthetic origin okay so pharmacognosy person may be there pharmaceutics person may be there who has developed the dosage form or chemistry person may be there who has synthesized the molecules in their respective laboratories okay and ultimately it needs to go through different phases and that phases includes the finally some microbial testings and at the institutional level we need to focus on the our animal experimentation okay so uh, even uh, another lecture is there which will use utilize the uh, newer techniques like cell culture and other things okay so that is also equally important but uh, we cannot reject the importance of the animal experimentation although cpc sca as well as some animal activists are creating a huge and huge cry regarding use of animals that the, we people should not use it but we cannot uh, reduce or we cannot uh, eliminate the role of animals as well as experimentation especially before we uh, produce or introduce our drug into the pharma market okay or the clinical trials okay so in present scenario what we have observed is the especially uh, our vaccination program uh am i able to share my screen can i khairna sir uh, i think i'm sir fourth option is there for sharing the screen yeah i'm trying it uh entire screen share option i'm able to use it i think it has got some hang are you able to listen to me yes sir you are audible okay audio has uh, i was trying three four times to uh, streaming my screen but i think because of that the system has hanged i will just rejoin in a moment yes please we will do Bear with the thing. So I hope it will resolve our problem. Some technical issue is there with the sir screen. Sir is joining soon. Please wait. am i visible yeah i think i am audible also yes yes sir you are audible sorry for the inconvenience i'm trying to share a screen screen share okay. 
sharing my screen. I'm sorry, I'm not able to share my screen here. I'm uh, opting this fourth share thing. After that, yes. uh, then uh, select entire screen. Then below option will be there again uh, for sharing. Share screen. Yes, okay. entire screen. Uh, screen sharing with tone. Share screen and entire screen I'm doing or I need to show which I think I have opened that entire screen. entire screen I'm unable to do that that share option is not in conspicuous sir, one on thing which I can click it sir on the below of the screen mute option is there then stop camera the fourth option is share yeah so that I have done. share and uh, then uh, you will open your presentation sir after that after that, I need to open my presentation. Before that, yes. I need not to open. No, if you are, you have opened the presentation skill, it will be okay. I kept it minimized one. Screen share. Achha. I need to uh, entire screen that uh, I had to Sorry. select it. I think uh, it is okay now. Yes, it is. It is sharing now, sir. Uh, my total screen is available yes sir yes yes the slides are changing okay yes. uh, so sorry for the internet this is again technology which we need to improve ourselves uh, in all this respect uh, so i have already uh, given you the brief about the how important this animal experimentation is there in the drug discovery because of the present scenario earlier also it was very important Okay, and in present scenario, it is becoming much and much more important. Okay, uh, although there are certain newer techniques through which we can minimize this animal experimentation. Okay, but to some extent. Okay, so in the global pharmaceutical market that I already mentioned you, I could not start this slide that time. So there are so many good opportunities for all the youngsters who are entering into the field of pharmacy and especially the faculty members who are there already in this field of academics okay and working in the drug discovery process and training our students okay in this direction so drug discovery cycle as um, you people are already knowing and other resource person will definitely cover the, the things in very details uh, and not going to the details so what we are doing we are com compound collection from the natural origin synthetic origin or something okay primary assays we are doing okay and from that we may get a lead compound or either secondary assays counter screening okay biology toxicity and finally we can go to the clinical candidate okay or if needed from the primary assay or high throughput screening will get a lead molecule okay then as a chemistry persons will go for structural characterization of these lead molecules protein ligand complex all the uh, receptor binding and uh, different cad related aspects we'll see in the drug design part okay and after complete proper drug designing we'll see to synthesize the exact molecules which will be a prominent candidate okay again we'll go for the uh, primary assays secondary assays and then clinical candidates will be able to study it on at the microbial level then animal levels models okay and after that we'll go for the clinical trials okay so animal experimentation is very very important aspect okay and that we are doing it uh, at various levels okay especially uh, in the academic institutions for the physiology experimentation pharmacology experimentation biology experimentations okay at um, when we were there 
uh, in our undergraduates diploma level also or degree level also we have used this animals uh, abundantly okay with proper precautions like frog rat mice cockroach okay that all of us have used it okay but it's very unfortunate that at this moment we are unable to use it at uh, the our regular day to day experimentation because of the cpcc guidelines okay okay although a lot many katal khane ya you can say cheek meat shops are already there they are doing the things that is legal one but the experimentation on the animals is somewhat we can they are saying that it is not as per the rules or laws at the undergraduate diploma level or degree level so we are basically dependent on the demonstration aspect after the interventions of this pci also with the cpcaca okay so every year we are uh, doing this training programs to the students okay with the help of various um, experimental animals okay and that includes various species of rats mouse rabbits guinea pigs and golden hamsters so these are very cute animals rabbits uh, guinea pigs or golden hamsters okay and specifically used for a very specific disease and disorders okay so uh, experimentation of that and here whenever the like, animal experimentation word comes first thing comes into the mind of everyone is the cpcc kyunki hamare pairon mein jaise bedi dal di hai this organization ne everybody thinks like that but it's not like that they are doing their uh, important role by the act okay uh, 1960 act okay so this is the committee for the purpose of control and supervision of experiments on experiment animals okay so cpcc and has a very important role okay in maintaining the proper guidelines otherwise it would have been a, a havoc har koi apne apne tarike se experiment karna chahega and if, if anybody wants to violate the rules regulations or the normal um, you can say animal rights are important jaise abhi kashmir mein hota hai okay anybody general public can throw any stone on the soldiers but if soldiers beat anybody okay it becomes human right violation so we are should not die divert from our topic but here also same thing happening okay so there was huge restrictions on this use of animal experimentation because there are certain guidelines and that guidelines if we follow it is very important that oh, most of the cpca nominees will permit us to carry out the experimentation so how they gives these guidelines so veterinary care especially animal procurement from the reliable source only we should procure the animals okay you should have a proper quarantine area stabilization area separation area into our animal house surveillance diagnosis on treatment of any disease or disorder after uh, getting these animals from the breeder if it is there that should be controlled properly then animal care technical person should be there to take care of these animals okay and personal hygiene those person who are working in the animal house okay so that should be again taken care properly okay uh, so nowadays it is common for all of us to see uh, the this type of gowns caps and masks so earlier we were not much more familiar with this type of system but an animal house whenever you are working with the animals especially diseased animals if we are treating them we are, we are creating some disease disorder into the animal by injecting certain medicines or sir injecting certain um, antigens into them or some microbial infection we are producing in them okay and then testing so we need to take care of ourselves also okay so proper handling of the animal is equally important to get a good result uh, for the animal experiments okay so ultimately we have to conclude that this animal experiment uh, this activity is present with this proportion this effect was there okay and percentage inhibition of rat paw edema like this is the plethysmometer okay so uh, instruments are very costly one but you will give you very good results okay so 
so the seismometer vigo basile you can say it will cost you about 6 lakhs about 8 lakh also okay so but it is a very useful instrument and it's a general necessity for all the uh, institutions who are uh, having this m pump pharmacology specially okay so to um, identify the whether the uh, drugs or herbal extracts what sort you are synthesized or you are extracted from the plant source or extraction from the animal source having anti inflammatory activity or not okay same way for pyrogen testing the rabbit holders or restrainers should be there for small animals uh, okay if you want to take out the blood from the ear vein okay so this holder restrainers uh, plays very very important role okay even for measuring the rectal temperature in pyrogen test specially okay so these holders are important uh, so for even small animal like rat or mice so that needs to be inserted into this small holder okay so we can take out easily the blood from the rat tail okay you can administer any drug or that type of thing so unless and until we will give this type of comfort to the animals also our results in the animal experimentation will not be perfect one okay so even the animal house which we maintain into our institution specially will have need to have a proper planning okay so this was the uh, one plan general plan which we were having in our animal house so this is old one but recently we have developed to a greater extent but what a small institution also can implement this type of plan that whenever we are entering into this animal house like this there should be shoe rack okay notice board mentioning the details of the animal house animal house in charge institute number of species of animals which are available into the animal house number of pups which are present okay who is the veterinarian who is the animal in charge contact numbers in case of any emergency so this is the office for the veterinarian who should be there okay then uh, the individual room for the individual species rats mice rabbits okay then minor operation theater should be also there breeding room room should be separate one feed room should be separate one bedding room should be separate one so this feed uh, we need to take out through this clean corridor okay and there is one another portion here back side is the dirty corridor okay this part is also dirty corridor so whenever the bedding material comes it will go to this area for autoclaving it will get autoclaved sterilized properly and then it will go to the individual rooms okay then the used bedding material paddy husk will come go out from this dirty corridor outside okay and the used cages will go to this dirty corridor it will be cleaned here first with the water okay then with detergent then with disinfectant will properly dry it here and then auto clave it and then process through this clean corridor to the individual rooms okay so this is the uh, type of prototype of animal house which we have been taught in various cpca training programs which i have conducted in delhi okay and i'm fortunate that uh, when i came here in 2001 through upsc as a lecturer okay, i was a junior most faculty over here and that time animal house activists were very active and with the guidance of professor agrawal ss agrawal our ex director and the founder vice president uh, chancellor for the dipsru university he has given me a task to look after the animal house although i am uh, basically from the pharmaceutical chemistry background but this was my additional assignment and through which i have developed my uh, small expertise not good one but to some extent we are able to uh, manage our animal house to a very good extent okay that time aims animal house was uh, they were trying to close it hamdad animal house was locked okay but we have maintained our animal house to a, uh, such a good extent that they have appreciated not only appreciated but given clearance to all our uh, ethical committee protocols okay so so there are various functional areas which need to be there specifically in the animal house for this experimentation building material corridors utilities animal rooms and doors should be transparent one drains should be proper walls and ceiling storage area experimental area and 
facility for the sanitization of the equipment as well as supplies okay so proper temperature control uh, should be their environment 18 to 29 degree centigrade for the all animal experimentation okay if we are increasing the temperature or decreasing delhi is very harsh in temperature conditions in summer it always go to above 40 degree centigrade and in winter it will always go below 5 degree centigrade so we need to have a proper temperature control with the help of air conditioning as well as heaters blowers dehumidifiers humidity control should be maintained ventilation should be properly maintained power and lighting power continuous power supply is required in the animal house okay otherwise the whatsoever plant we have done for a, a long period kab se hum plan kar rahe hain ek experimental karne ke liye aur beech mein hi aapka koi power failure ho jata hai okay and that will affect the experiment also design also as well as the uh, you can condition physical condition of the your animals also okay so even proper noise control so we have seen a very important example of our um, guinea pigs so the activity when our uh, new pg block university building was constructed they used to cut the tiles as well as granite with the cutter and having huge noise and after that we have observed that a lot many changes in the experimental results was there because these guinea pigs used to go and sit into one one small corner of this that particular cage or you can say that we are having some type of how the okay for these small guinea pigs okay in open atmosphere we used to keep the rats as well as uh, rabbits and this guinea pig specially okay for rats this polycarbonate cages we are using and we used to use also okay so caging system uh, outdoor housing is also equally important so this way the cages and this is the updated view where the ventilated cage system or rack system for individual cage also individual ventilation is there okay so this is the one of the sophisticated um, instruments which we need to have in our uh, animal house if possible if not then at least uh, this type of small openings or you can say open area jaise zoo mein hota hai usi tarah se for rabbits or guinea pigs we used to have uh, this type of uh, natural habitat because we know that for one hour itself okay i am not able to see you people or you people are not able to see other people okay sitting and listening to this presentation but sitting in a simple chair for one hour it becomes difficult for all of us and imagine the condition of this small animals like rats rabbits specially okay they wanted to move here and there and if you are restricting them to 2 by 2 stainless steel cage or 2 or 4 by 6 stainless steel cage becomes very difficult and that will change their total body structure you can say that specially psychology of that particular animals and if you give them open area then the experimental results are excellent breeding in the natural habitat or atmosphere will be excellent okay rather than in a small cages breeding cages are also equal are there so many issues are using using it but whenever possible it should have some better uh, rehabilitation type of things or for breeding atmosphere uh, open space with proper protection so that even snakes should not enter through this animal house also okay so proper diet restrictions for the animals are equally important for experimental purpose otherwise our experiment will also fail okay if we are having rat paw edema we need to use the animals of 100 uh, gram to 125 gram but if you are excessive feeding the animals by the time you cleared your experimental protocol from the ethical committee and by the time you start your working the weight of your animal from 50 g will go to 200 g or 250 g so it will be of no use to uh, your experiment so experimental animals for the drug discovery should be properly fed with all the minerals vitamins or something like that this is the range how much quantity you should give it to the animals into that respective cages because this is also equally important point because uh, as a researcher as a teacher we are not going to this extent only either phd student or mpharm student will go and take care of this thing and he will also deliver this feeding part to the attendant who is not at all trained 
टू गिव दिंग्स वॉट ही विल डू वो सैटरडे संडे का प्रोग्राम उसका है छुट्टी है सो so, एक दिन में बिल्कुल 200 ग्राम 300 ग्राम फीड डाल के निकल जाएगा ओके एंड वॉट एनिमल विल डू दे विल डू एक्सेसिव फीडिंग एंड विल गेन दी वेट्स एंड नॉट बी ऑफ यूजफुल सो बेडिंग मटेरियल खास पेपर शेडिंग प्रॉपर वाटर इवन दी बॉटल्स और दी नोजल्स शुड बी ऑफ स्टेनलेस स्टील एंड विथ no corrosion type of things so one um, good observation we have observed that by mistake some uh, attendant has not given proper care and the uh, nozzle was not proper one it was having some uh, manufacturing defect in the starting and having some splinter metallic splinter outside and the animals used to go and suck the water from that and they used to bleed from the mouth okay so and after that experimental uh, person or the scientist who was working over that was very much worried that how i have not given the medicine also or any drug also so how these animals are showing this type of symptom so the symptom was because of the non handling properly the animals not providing the proper water bottles with proper nozzles okay so at each and was every point with small small precautions we do or carry out our experiment on the any experimental animals then Uh, we can get a very good reproducible results and which can be very well published into the good reputed journals okay so record keeping is very very important and standard operating procedure should be followed anesthesia euthanasia okay all these practices should be included even if the animal experimentation committee especially ethical iic is very strong one so we are having the, uh, generally experts from the either aims as a institute ethical committee member or national institute of genomics so they are very good scientists top level scientists and they will see individually protocol very carefully read it so each and every meeting they will not go through more than 8 to 10 protocols so one one protocol they will discuss it for a half hour or one hour also sometimes so we need to fabricate or plan our research experimentation annual experimentation in such a way that they will not have any type of uh, confusion into the ethical protocol so that we will, they will reject it okay so if required the most of the animal ethical committee need to have uh, two biological scientists one veterinarian which will take care of the animals uh, is very much needed scientist from outside the institute is equally important non scientific society aware member is also required there a representative of nominee of the cpcac is a must unless and until he delivers you the power yeah in my absence also he will act as a nominee and you can proceed the meeting then and then only we will be able to proceed the meeting otherwise we need to wait for the ethical committee uh, cpcac member okay and specialty member okay like uh, nowadays we are doing work on herbals so lot of uh, experiments are carried out with the help of herbals especially baba ji ke um, patanjali aur unke jo products aa rahe hain uske baad mein to bahut jyada awareness ho gaya although we are having a rich heritage of this ayurveda products what our chief guest has also mentioned the basic principles of ayurveda okay so that we should follow it and there are lot many lot many opportunities are in the field of ayurveda as well as homeopathy also and specially in nasik and all pune other cities they are having so many good ayurveda colleges homeopathy colleges as well as medical institution in and your vicinity as well as in your uh, society or in your university itself there may be some this type of uh, homeopathy ayurveda or medical college so you can collaborate your research and specially can focus on this animal experimentation part either medical college will also have a good animal house and animal uh, studies part over there as well or in your pg institute specially pharmaceutical institution so that can help you out so if you are working on some radio active material then you need to take for expertise from the bar or drdo or something like that if you are working on ayurveda product bms person minimum should be a part of your uh ethical committee members okay so there are so many so many re- basic requirements of the animal house which we should have it okay if any expert come and visits they give the license for renewal of the um 
animal house maintenance okay they will also see that you are having all these requirements in the your animal house okay there are so many websites important websites especially vs drug administration okay uh, even uh, the government websites especially of aims also cdri uh, websites also there and there are so many reputed animal house facilities in india i am just naming few cdri lucknow has a wonderful animal house under the uh, leadership of dr guru was there earlier now i think dr yadav is there also in aims who has maintained very good animal house ivri izhat nagar is the best facility for which through which we uh, take collect the animals okay dipsar dipsaru our university has a good animal house with four story animal house and two lifts are there especially one for carrying the animals one for the human being who are working over there NIV National Institute of Biological Noida has good very good animal house uh, the ex director general of DCGA Dr Surender Singh yeah, he has developed very good animal house in the NIV National Institute of Biological so uh, agriculture university hisar is also having a very good animal house facility over there and they are giving breeding also and say, providing the animals to the various pharmaceutical institutes as well as industries also in the north okay so while doing the all the animal experimentation the four hours which we need to follow okay generally uh, in the theory it is given only three hours that is refinement reduction and replacement okay but from my side i consider this fourth hour also that is rehabilitation of this experimental animal is very very important so because most of the usually ethical committee members specially cpca nominee will ask what after your experimentation aap us animal ko kya karenge experiment khatam hone ke baad mein aap you will you are going to kill it if they are going to kill it generally they will postpone the protocol ki nahi kill wala experiment pehle na karo aap okay if we are killing it at least the other parts should be utilized if the pg student is working on the uh, normal uh, rat okay or rabbit especially and having the certain uh, effects on the cns okay and if you want to kill the animal for the pathophysiological studies then the other students at pg level at, as well as ug level can take out the heart take out that rat skin and study the other experiment as a demonstration also so that they are trying and if the animal is not getting killed during animal experimentation that should be rehabilitated properly after wash out period that can be utilized in the further studies also so that is also equally important so along with this animal experimentation there are uh, so many um, uh, we can say that software was available ex farm cd was there by professor ravindran and after that one elsewhere cd was also um, brought to the market with our good friend dr professor c r patil who was there from the shirpur and recently joined dipsar as a professor in pharmacology they are developing uh, new software as well as cd along with professor ravindran and in a very short period that will come into the market i think so we are doing good in this type of experimentation part there are some good examples that i think nanded college of pharmacy has also developed very good software from this for experimental pharmacology as well as maharashtra state uh, msc uh, msbt has also has introduced so many good softwares through all these polytechnics as well as diploma institutions okay and that is very good move so along with that uh, what another resource person will tell you that some cell cultures tissue culture okay that can be utilized for the uh, in place of the animal activity it is always welcome thing okay so experimental design is obvious a critical component of the success of any research project okay so we need to um, design our experiment in the initial phases itself before starting synthesis before starting uh, the extraction process total experiment should be properly designed along with the animal experimentation if all aspects of the experimental designs are not thoroughly addressed scientists may reach false conclusions and pursue 
avenues of research that waste considerable time as well as resources so it is therefore as a pharmacist pharmacologist we should be critical while designing the scientifically sound experiments and to follow the standard laboratory practices okay so that is proper handling of the animals and other things while performing these experiments to generate a valid reproducible data which is very much necessary okay so reproducible data is very much necessary in the field of research okay so uh, i think with this i can uh, stop my presentation so i hope you are uh, you understood the importance of this uh, animal experimentation okay and if time permits i would like to give mention or uh, show some slides of our dipsar uh, dipsuru uh, thanar sir is it possible for 2 minute yes yes sir yes you can okay so so here uh, i am here on behalf of this dipsar dipsuru so dipsar is the delhi institute of pharmaceutical science and research okay and we are having a uh, old history of about uh, can say that 65 years okay so uh, it was earlier attached with the uh, delhi university okay and now we are part of the uh, dipsaru university so dipsaru is the uh delhi government state university and uh, imparting a uh, very good knowledge about the field of pharmacy okay and uh, we are running with different courses okay of d farm b farm m farm phd level okay dipsar is having this type of courses over here okay. and Uh, as far as the university is concerned it is established in 2008 by the act but started working in 2015 so 2015 we have cleared two batches out of our institution or university batches has come out uh, in two batches and university is also having so many other uh, courses like along with b farm m farm university is having masters in uh, M mba in pharmaceutical management okay then uh, now we are having uh, specially uh, masters in hospital management okay then we are having uh masters in public health okay then must uh, bachelor in physiotherapy bpt we are having okay and uh, we are having now recently we are starting the so this is the dipsar dipsuru campus having a very good sports complex auditorium okay and all the facilities over here and dipsar is the uh, you can say uh, it is a qip nodal center specially for uh, faculty who want to pursue their phd okay can come and go through our uh, dipsar's website aict website which will give us the detail idea so this is the uh, latest thing when we have introduced or started our yoga center through arvind kejriwal ji as well as manish sodia ji okay uh, third convocation we have finished over here and uh, recently our university has developed a product of chloroquine and against the covid 
this product has been uh, developed by the university it is getting launched recently okay and it is our proud that gpat rank 1 mr gaurav gupta is the student of dipsar one more gpat rank 1 is there from the karad okay so this person as then this is our general government council lieutenant governor is the uh, sir over here dr divedi professor arke goel uh, renowned pharmacologist from the field of pharmacy as well as pharmacology from the lm college of pharmacy he was the principal over there and then the uh, vice chancellor of ms university and after that he joined us so this is officer dr uh, b deepak sb deepak he is the dentist who is in our general council along with that ex vice chancellor of the university then pankaj bhai patel from the uh, you can cadilla healthcare okay he is the one important person over here okay and board of governors we are having professor vm katoch ex csr director dr rajesh jain director of the panacea biotech okay so so many good people respective people are there in the academic council also we are having professor gn kaji ex vice chancellor of Ahmedabad University, Rajesh Jain, Panacea, SK Gupta sir, ex head of the AIMS. Okay, so I am also member of this uh, academic council of university. Okay, so there are so many courses over here, and especially uh, the uh, with the bright or the can long lasting vision of our direct, uh, vice chancellor Professor R K Goel, we are starting B Farm in Ayurveda also in this present uh, session preferably. Okay. For skill development also, we are having a very good skill development center as well as incubation center. So those faculty members okay, who are having uh, some projects with their students, they can approach us and they can get uh, some seed amount for their project at their respective institute also. But through Dipsur also, Dipsur also, they can also join this thing. So uh, we are the how the roadmap in 1964 dipsar started in pusa polytechnic as a department of pharmacy in 1972 we started degree course and then renamed as a college of pharmacy in 2004 it was redesignated on the basis of aims that delhi institute of pharmaceutical science and research by professor agrawal okay so in 2008 the uh, university act was enacted and 2015 total admission started and are having BPharm, MBA, MPH, and so many courses are going on. So with this, I conclude my talk over here. And if you are having any doubt or anything you'd like to ask, you are most welcome. And you are most welcome to uh, Dipsa Dipsuru. We are organizing so many international national conferences as well as FDB training programs also. So I suggest all the faculty members who are attending attending this program should come in person also in future to uh, visit our institution and take advantage of all the facilities which are uh, present over here and especially uh, send your pg students for phd program those especially university toppers will uh, get uh, dst inspired fellowship if you are having phd pro programs in your university it is very good thing but if we are not having any PhD program in your, your proper respective institutions or universities, you can send the university toppers to Dipsar as a DST Inspire Fellow as well as NDF or AICT doctoral fellowship programs are also there. So that is good thing. And we are having very good uh, MOUs with the DRDO lab over here, Indian Pharmacopoeia lab, Ghaziabad, as well as uh, THISTI, Transitional Drug Research Institute, Faridabad. So this type of very good uh, reputed institutions we are having MOU. Now, recently we have MOU with the National Institute of Ayurveda. Okay, So doing some good work in that field also. So I suggest all of you to take active participation uh, in the research activities at your place. Guide your students so that whether it is from pharmacognosy, ecology, sutics, chemistry. Okay, So their research planning should be such that the animal experimentation results conclusions should be properly designed one okay and unless and until these things are considered at the initial level you will not be able to submit your proposals to the aict or rps model or some dst 
first areas as well as uh, into icmr project project also so icmr project especially animal experimentation plays very very important role unless and until you have a good animal ethical clearance they will not accept your project okay nowadays icmr is also giving a good funding for the research project so i suggest all of you to take participate participate into this research area of drug design drug synthesis extraction isolation characterization formulation of new dosage forms go for its animal experimentation prove it and go for to clinical trials level also with the help of certain cro's or medical institutions which are available in near vicinity in order to produce a very good quality of pharmacy professionals and uh, because wo hamare liye aadhar stambh hai and teachers are the backbone of all these pharma infrastructure so i suggest all of you to boost your students or encourage your students as well as those who are in pharm at uh, their institution level and they want to go for phd's go for phd's also so thank you very much karnar sir thank you sir uh, we will take certain questions from the participant the first please. question is uh, please guide the requirements permissions for using microorganisms on animal for testing uh, as such uh, uh, there are no specific requirement for the use of microorganisms on the animals it is through ethical committee protocols only it will be governed whether it will produce a uh, tuberculosis into that animal or something like that then only precautions of that aspect whether the person who, are, who is carrying out that experiment especially guinea pig trachea if you want to take out in the tubercular experimentation then you need to have a, a proper uh, physician also along with you animal house uh, man, uh, manager or you can say veterinarian should be there as well as allopathic person should be also involved if the microorganisms are somewhat toxic in nature especially sir one more question uh, what would be the role of artificial intelligence in the experimentation of the animals with respect to drug discovery yeah yeah it is uh, because this uh, artificial intelligence is the burning area you can say yeah, very 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 important area and all of us should learn some aspect of this artificial intelligence or softwares uh, drug design softwares as well as some engineering aspect also most of the places like in your institution also there may be some engineering college with computer background so we should collaborate with them also in order to develop certain medical devices okay uh, that it can be utilized in the instead of animal experimentation also like synthesis high throughput screening because of the cad cam as well as uh, the softwares like schrodinger or v life sciences or so many others are there okay we are minimizing the time period in selecting the drug molecules same way animal experimentation uh, nowadays we can reduce to some extent okay with the help of experimental tools and especially artificial intelligence will play a huge role in this aspect also so one example simple i can give you recently eight semester viva was there and one of my student worked on the uh, medical devices and medical softwares she has undergone a very good presentation and once through campus only she has given interview for one company who was dealing with this type of thing and i can tell you in our history itself this was she got placed for 12 lakh per annum for last 5 days only she joined with b farm background she is getting 12 lakh so even sometimes it is difficult to get for fresh phd students also from our institution but the student was very keen she was interested she was uh, learning other allied field also okay so yashika was the one girl she has she has worked wonderfully on this aspect of medical devices softwares and artificial intelligence and she got placed with such a thing so it is a vast area it will itself so many webinars or uh, fdps are there on the artificial intelligence so uh, we can go into details in future if type permit but it is very good role is there for the artificial intelligence because nowadays even we go for a sophisticated car itself once you come near to the car 
automatically it will sense that you are near to car the uh, mirrors will be opened light will be focused where we should come across okay automatically internal lighting will be started so that that more uh, automotive industry has developed to such an extent ki wo pehle hi presence aapka feel kar leti hai even by sitting in your room you can start your engine with your remote control so same way if we can design such type of instruments in future that we can monitor the things by not only on screen by on our mobile also and train the animals from that aspect also so and in artificial intelligence has a huge role in this field thank you thank you nice sir. question thank you sir for your valuable time for your energetic and knowledgeable session on use of animals in drug engineering definitely it will help to our students staff and all the participants of the today's session who want to do their career in drug discovery now uh, this first session is over i request dr santosh chajet sir uh, to take the charge for the second session thank you sir thanks a lot welcome sir. it was nice to interact with all of you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you kagnar sir uh, good morning everyone once again i welcome you all for national level one day seminar on recent development in drug engineering and it's uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce one of the eminent speaker respected dr mala parab madam has done her phd in biotechnology and currently she is working as an assistant professor at dy patil deemed to be university cbd belapur navi mumbai dr mala is having about 15 years of teaching experience she has also worked as a associate faculty for the subject of biochemistry and molecular biology for university of lancashire uk for 5 years madam has guided successfully 40 scholars for their research her thrust area is animal and plant biotechnology nutraceutical formulation and laboratory analysis cytotoxicity and functional testing of pharmaceutical products she has published about 15 research papers in international journal of repute and she is in receipt of nine different awards madam has also filed one patent and deposited 54 sequence in gene bank and protein bank with this brief introduction of madam and without wasting time i request madam to start her session please welcome madam thank you so much dr santosh it was indeed a pleasure and um, not a very good person in such a big platform that is very honest um it was really a good session i really would like to acknowledge dr sharad who had a very near knowledge gearing session for me and he laid a very good platform for me too so uh, i would like to share my screen now may i yes yes sir I hope the screen is visible, sir. Yes, ma'am, it is. It is visible. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. With the situation which we are currently in, with the kind of the environment we are in, the uh, um, there is a lot of call for a rapid work and rapid development of the drug. it has become a history wherein the drug development was considered as an ages of process wherein hard scrutiny is involved in creating a novel drug molecule today not only with the discovery of novel molecules we are also working in the sectors where we are trying to look for repositioning or repurposing or identifying the no uh, key targets of the molecules or drugs or cosmetics or herbal products towards the human applications so let us start with a virtual tour of the cell culture technology as a background i would like to discuss that whenever we talk about the drug discovery there are two aspects that are considered one is a preclinical analysis and the other is the clinical analysis the preclinical analysis usually is initiated just a second yes the preclinical analysis usually all of this goes hand in hand but the initial background is led by the 
in silico studies wherein the lead identification is done using the different computational technologies plus an active formulation of the api as such once this base is laid we have a scrutiny of the efficiency and efficacy of these synthesized or natural molecules using an in vitro technology wherein the permeation toxicity metabolic impact drug dose effect is usually evaluated which is as the same case which we have seen in the in vivo studies where the animal testing is done once the molecule or a drug or a herbal product that qualifies these four base aspects we move towards the clinical trials wherein there are human studies performed at the mams trials cohort cases or cross sectional studies are conducted now i don't need to speak more on this because with the pandemic situation we have been daily updated of how a different kind molecules of the vaccine if i say of the advancement within a span of around 6 months or 1 year we had more than 300 putative molecules to be considered as a vaccine of which many are already into the applications in several countries across the globe okay now what is this cell culture technology we all understood with the help of dr rathod for certain ethical and the cost related reasons the use of animals have become limited i am not saying it is eliminated because it is a co part of the drug discovery but however the number of the animals which was being implemented for the uh, experimentation has been considerably reduced now the world of the cell culture or the 3d model systems are thus have become an excellent tool for analyzing the role of these potential molecules on the physiology of the cells metabolic activities of the cells it has also been implemented in identifying the interaction how a disease development takes place how a cancer progression may take place what if i implement a drug what kind of interaction is being introduced among these cells so that the cancer metastasis can be controlled interesting isn't it also the cell culture has been largely employed you know it's a very old field of study wherein now we talk about the therapeutic products that are coming from the cell culture like insulin you talk about the growth factor you talk about the interferon these all are now having a human insulin we i'm sure you all are aware of this right so cell culture was initially used in the strategies where we were working for vaccine development first vaccine for the polio did come from a cell culture itself now we are just focusing on the field wherein we are targeting retargeting repurposing or we are doing the target identification or mechanistic identification using this in vitro system the key advantages of working on in vitro system is since they are the clonal propagates of the cells the consistency and reproducibility of the results gets affirmed also you can simultaneously evaluate the multiple range of the concentrations okay within a short period of time and that is what they are termed under the broad head as high throughput and high content screening that is hts and hcs however everything every coin like it says has two faces every technology has its pros and cons the key limitation of working on the cell culture system is the cost of maintenance is pretty high which leads to the limitation of the application apart from it there are certain drug molecules which undergo a metabolic activation these cannot be predicted completely when we are working on a two dimensional culture system as such now the figures that are we are visualizing now usually represents how the cultures are initiated on the left we have a primary culture being initiated from the fish pituitary and the human muscular cells where the tissues are initially isolated cleaved into smaller pieces the cells are disaggregated or dissociated with the help of enzymatic digestion there are different enzymes that can be implemented to isolate the cells from the tissue individual cells are then propagated either in a two dimensional culture system or in a three dimensional culture system with the growth promoting medium fps and if any specific growth factor is required on the right side you can see how we can propagate an established culture now when you're talking about the established cultures most of the mammalian cells grow as an adhered cells onto the two dimensional this culture flask 
Now, since they are growing as an adhered cell, they have a phenomena of growing as a monolayer. There is a space construction which eventually gets introduced as the cells are propagating. So we need to passage the cells. This passaging basically involves uh, detaching the cells from their substrate with the help enzyme like trypsin or whatever enzymes they are functional with and the harvested cells are re-inoculated into the fresh culture media. So usually, as I said, the left side is the initiation of a primary culture, while the right side is representing how a routine maintenance is con conducted into the cell culture labs. Now, let us just have a look of what are the different commercial cell lines which I can implement in the cell culture. Hela is one of the most uh, oldest cell line. In fact, it was the first cell line that was derived from a cervical cancer tissue. Hela has been used since ages for the development assays. It has been used in the infection disease progressions or STD analysis because Hela has a key of receptor molecules. If you can see, it has a C, uh, C independent activity protein kinase uh, C independent activity, it expresses keratin, it has uh, the uh, nuclear transcriptors like CJUN and AP1, etc. It also has a wide array of the isoenzymes, which are usually the lead targets of several therapeutic products or the herbal products or the cosmetic products. Another cell line which is used maximally in the field of uh, drug analysis or drug discovery is your MCF7, which is a breast cancer, a mammary epithelial cell line. And it is um, usually having an ability to produce the estradiol within the cell culture. It also has a different kinds of basically the tyrosine kinase receptor series being expressed through it. Therefore, it is widely applied in the HDS. It is applied in assay development and in the cancer research. There is one more cell line that is an MDA-MD, which is also a breast cancer epithelial cell line. But this is usually implemented in the metastatic studies, wherein you are applying to control the metastasis. Apart from this, we have a normal cell line like CHO, which is a Chinese hamster ovary cell line. It is an epithelial cell line again, wherein um, uh, we are, this cell line is actually applied in industry for synthesis of the vaccines and the therapeutic proteins. HEK, which is a human epithelial kidney cell line, this is usually implemented to work on the uh, cytotoxicity of the compound onto the kidney cells. Then the cells can also grow as a suspension like we have the HL60, which is a lymphoblast-like cell line. This HF60, HL60 is usually implemented in immunological research or in the leukemia drug therapeutics. Apart from this, we have a large number of cell lines, like we have, um, you know, PC3, we have SF9, which is an insect cell line. Uh, all these informations of the cell lines are basically available with the ATCC, which is a universal cell repository for all the cell lines. Okay, now let us look how we can implement. This was just the basics of what are cell lines, what are the cultures. Let us see how I can use it in my drug discovery. Now, the cell lines are usually implemented in multiplex functional screening on the basis of the cellular functions. Basically, we are interested in evaluating, understanding the effect of these pharma-based products on cell signaling, cell shape, cell to uh, toxicity or cell proliferative capacity Okay, we also try to evaluate the cellular phenomena, how the cells are interacting with each other. Are there any cytoskeletal changes which are being introduced in the cell? Is there any change in the cellular morphology when it is being exposed to a particular drug? Thus, they become the key contents when we talk about the assay developments in primary and secondary screening and the toxicity screening of the molecules as such. The same ADME analysis is also done on the animal cells. The only thing is once we have, you know, identified these toxicity variations, we have identified the morphological variations that could be introduced by the molecule or any kind of, you know, undesired effect which is being introduced by the molecule under analysis, you just try to prove it in in vivo so that you know, you can compare what happens when it is a single controlled metabolism and when it is a multiple controlled metabolism. Whenever we want to decide to work on these cell lines, there are some aspects that we need to consider which are purely based on the objective of my research study. What is my goal of the research study? What I am expecting as my outcome? 
on these criteria, I decide the cell type, whether I want to do a short term study, I don't want to do an elaborate study. So I can take a primary cell culture or I can take a native culture. If I am talking about the drug development, I am talking about, you know, synthesis, I will require an engineered cell line. Like in recombinant bacteria, we have these recombinant cell lines, you know, that have the specific reporter genes, the selection genes that allows them to be selected over the non-recombinant cells. Or you want to work on 3D model organisms. Also, you need to consider whether you are interested in doing the functional assay or you're just interested in doing a toxicity assay or a reporter gene assay. What are your key targets that you're looking for an interaction how are you going to validate your data? Okay. And eventually also, depending upon the facility that is available to you, you decide your detection method, whether it's a fluorescent method, a luminescent method, or a spectrophotometric. Because what I mentioned this point over here is, if I am interested in fluorescent, I would require a fluorescent markers within my cell. So for them, definitely my choice of cell would be an engineered cell line. Now, let us look into the different assays that are involved in the cell toxicity. Now, usually when we talk about the cellular analysis or physiological effect of any pharmaceutical product, again, I repeat, it could be a chemical, it could be a natural product, it could be a herbal product as such. So we do these analysis, one, on the basis of the viability purely, which is the function of life or a dead cell. Secondly, we evaluate it as a metabolic outcome, which I will eventually talk as I'm moving ahead. Now, on the basis of viability or cytotoxicity, there is a membrane integrity assay. The classical dye that is used in this membrane uh, integrity assay is the tripen blue. Now, this is a dye which is usually taken up by the dead cells. So the dead cells will usually appear blue, while the vi um, viable cells or the living cells will not take up any stain. It is a perception or a purview that any kind of cellular damage is going to disturb the membrane polarity and membrane integrity. Similarly, we have a dye as, uh, uptake assays with the help of the dye acetyl fluorescein. Only the living cells will Flores. This is basically on the esterase activity of the enzyme, which is present in the cellular cytoplasm. We have a labeled chromium uptake assay. Again, there would be a, um, what do you call, luminescence, which happens by the virtue of the dehydrogenase enzyme in the cells. So these dehydrogenases will be functional among the living cells. We have an LDH leakage assay, or we call it as enzyme release assay. LDH is present in the nominal concentrations in every cell. However, whenever a, ce a cellular damage is ensued, this LDH gets leaks into the cell culture media. So when I stain with WST or such stains, I would get a yellow color formation, which I can detect spectrophotometrically. Now, another important assay is whether my molecule is inducing, if I'm talking of an anti-proliferative or I'm talking about an anti-cancer assay. So whether the molecule that is under analysis inducing this anti-proliferation via an apoptotic methodology or a necrotic methodology. If it is um, inducing apoptosis or when I'm talking about a degree progression, whether the uh, disease is, you know, inducing apoptosis, how do I detect it? For this, we do an annexin 5 binding assay. Now, this annexin binding assay basically relies on the interaction with the IP3 molecules. These IP3 molecules are present on our, our cytoskeleton and usually not expressed in the normal cells. However, whenever the cell is progression, uh, progressing, I'm sorry, for a degeneration or it is progressing for apoptosis, there becomes an enhanced expression of these IP3 molecules. As a result of which, you can see a prominent, uh, you know, kind of staining onto the graphs. On the contrary, when we talk about these metabolic assays, uh, functional assays, they think on the metabolic components which are essential for the cellular growth and survival. Thus, any kind of damage or an unfavorable environment for the cell would eventually result in the loss of the ability to, uh, you know, perform that particular metabolic function as such. 
Now, what are the different assays that I can use to evaluate this metabolic activity? One of the classical assays are your MTT or XTT assay. Now, these assays usually rely on, you know, conversion of the um, staining molecule that is the tetrazoleum salt by the mitochondrial dehydrogenase to a purple colored compound. Okay, that is called as formazone. The formation of this formazone is then estimated spectrophotometrically. So higher the coloration, higher is the percentage of viable cells. So eventually, if your drug is a cytotoxic drug, with the increase in the drug concentration, the cellular viability may get affected. Similar, this yellow one is indicating the XTT assay. Then you can also, you know, segregate your viable cells from the non-viable cells using a flow cytometry, wherein the cells are segregated on the basis of their fluorescent interactions or the luminescent interactions as such. Or you can also use, you know, antigen binding with the cell surface markers. Another interesting assay, when especially we are looking for an anti-cancer therapeutic product, is the migration assay or wound scratch assay. Now, in this, usually the cells are um, scratched from the center. If you can see the zero R, there is a large gap between the cells. All right. The, this scratch or a wound has been created intentionally. Now, cancer cells are highly chemotactic, highly metabolically active, and they keep multiplying with, uh, towards each other very fast. So, eventually, if it's uh, the cancer activity is uh, the drug is not a potential anti-cancer, the cells would migrate towards each other very fast and, you know, they would cover this gap completely. But if the drug is cytotoxic, okay, it will affect this chemotactic or mobility of the cell towards each other and the gap would remain persistent. This assay usually can be concluded in a matter of hours or maybe an overnight as such. So depending upon the mobility or viability of the cells, you can see this wound healing ability. So this is not only used in cytotoxicity activity, but you can also implement it to, you know, in a dizzy progression condition. Or if you want to read the cell-cell interaction, how the two cells are communicating to each other, what are the key proteins. There are different, you know, uh, fluorescent dyes which are offered by the different companies that you can use to tag these specific cell surface receptors and see how the two cells are talking. I'm sure even we can't remain quiet for one minute also. We constantly talk to someone. So just imagine that our cells are also constantly talking to each other. And the moment the talking is stopped, the cell is not living anymore. Okay, so that critical is this talking among the cells. Then we have a clonogenic assay, which is also called as a colony forming assay. Now, this is especially done if you want to, in uh, you know, understand the anti-cancer activity. As I said, the cancer cells have high proliferative capacity. Their proliferation is not usually controlled. They can multiply themselves without any trigger from the external environment. Now, when I am treating a compound with the anti-cancer molecule, if you see these yellow cultures, uh, circles over here, this shows the cells usually have a tendency to form small colonies or, you know, it's a one clonal cell which is forming multiple colonies around itself. So for this, what we usually do is, you know, we uh, seed the cultures with very little amount of the cells and incubate it for, you know, one to three weeks and see how the colony progression takes place. If the molecule is working as a very good site, uh, I'm sorry, anti-proliferative molecule, this colony formation would be inhibited and cells would come back as a monolayer. They won't grow as a multi-layer. You can also stain your cells with crystal violet after three weeks of the progression. So usually, I would conclude if there's no colony formed, the molecule is working as an anti-cancer molecule. Apart from this, we can also use a calcium flusk assay. We all know we have calcium ion transporters across our cell membranes. So whenever there is a cellular damage, as I have also already mentioned, there is going to be change in the normal metabolism of the cell because of which you start experiencing a leakage of this calcium metabolites in your environment. So when I treat it with a luminescent drug, 
it will give me a luminescence if there's an excessive you know outflow of the calcium during the cellular damage so if any herbal product or any cosmetic product is causing any kind of damage to the normal cell that is why i've given an example of the normal cells over here as simple as you know your toothpaste also which we use or tooth powders every commercial product which a human being uses can be evaluated then there is an apoptotic assay now this is very specific when we are talking about the anti cancer or anti proliferative molecules now as i already mentioned it is always good you know to have a therapeutic product that induces apoptosis as an anti proliferative agent because and apoptosis in a layman language is a clean death while necrosis is a very messy death which leads to inflammation now whenever there is an apoptosis induced by the chemical molecule under analysis the main step of apoptosis is nuclear degeneration you know degradation wherein you find the fragments of a very specific length so when i am evaluating this on an agarose gel if there is an apoptosis which is being triggered i will get the fragments of a very specific base lengths maybe 360 180 base pair and so depending upon the caspase protein that has been activated or triggered by the molecule under study these fragments will be according to their molecular lengths okay if there is necrosis i would just see a shear or i would just see a shimmer as such so in this case i would not see these discrete bands and if it is not inducing any dna degradation i would just see one dna band so it is basically dna content analysis so in a nutshell if i just put it like a simple procedure how i do any of these assays when i want to work on any of the assays which we just saw we usually do these assays in micro titer plates also called as the 96 well plates the cells are usually seeded from 1000 to 5000 depending upon the cell population that i have and they are incubated in the co2 incubator with their media after 24 hours of incubation or 48 hours where you see a complete confluent monolayer the cells are treated with a drug compound of the interest and again incubated for different time intervals post different time intervals we treat them with the dye that we are using for the analysis or the evaluation okay and after few hours of incubation you analyze the absorbance or the fluorescence using the specific instrument so this is how when i am doing the data analysis uh, i see the graph i hope uh, my slides are running in session properly okay so we see the cells uh, you know you can see the stains over here using either an excel sheet, uh, excel platform where i can incorporate y is equal to mx plus c formula or i can you know a plus b well a formula or i can use a graph pair uh, pad prism software and try to calculate the cell percentage survival or cell percentage inhibition uh, you know which is being induced by the molecule that i am evaluating okay apart from this there are automated cell counters which replenish the cells you know with the kind of uh, medias that is required and in c2 identification of the live cells this is untreated live cells and treated cells with the dyes are evaluated the graphs are plotted on the basis of the percentage of the living and the dead cells and their dna content now apart from you know evaluating the numbers how much number of the cell or what function of the cell is being altered there is a key indicator you know in the cell that is uh, we can just see the face you know we all can see each other's face and say okay this person is not in a mood or the person is under stress similarly when i see at my cells i can say that my cells are under stress or something is not correct in my cells or if it is anti proliferative drug it is working we can see this classical example of the skin keratinocytes over here and the skin fibroblast over here if you see the image a in both the hands you can see a perfect morphology of the cells a complete confluent culture as such but when i see the image b for both the fibroblast and keratinocyte i see the cell morphology being distorted 
This is especially when you're doing the cosmetic or herbal formulations for the skin cells. We usually evaluate through this. If I see there's a distortion in morphology, I definitely progress with the functional assays to see what type of toxicity is being activated. All right. Then, so in a quick recap, the assays that we do, we have a membrane integrity, a functional, a DNA label, morphological, and a reproductive assay that gives me a clear picture of the molecule that I'm, I'm analyzing, how good or how uh, good it, uh, I'm sorry, a good or not good it is for a commercial application. Once they surpass these uh, assays, wherein I can calculate their IC50 values, I can calculate their EC50 values, I can identify their LD50 values. Once I'm sure with these values as such, and I see no major damage to the cell, I progress with the animal studies and further the clinical trials. Now, apart from these cellular functions, you know, we all know whenever there is a stress onto the cell, it leads to the activation of the reactive oxygen species or ROS. These ROS molecules, this is especially true when I talk about a cancer, which is at a very initial stages, if I want to identify or I'm targeting the drug at the primary stage as such or a secondary stage. These ROS usually affect the oxidative metabolism or the oxidative pathways of the cells, wherein, you know, you can see either uh, coupling of the cells, you can see the uh, lactate uh, release, or you can go for, you know, glucose consumption uh, is usually go getting affected. The creatine conversion gets affected. Again, the, you know, the conversion of astrocytes to the neurons usually gets affected. So I can use any of these functions of the cell, you know, to make it as a confirmatory test, whether the molecule that I'm screening is suitable for further applications or no. So that is what I said in HTS and HCS. From multiple cell um, leads, you come down who you shortlist to five to 10 molecules, which you progress further for the analysis. Now, this is more focused on the cancer cells, what I spoke just now. If it is a diabetic cell, which I want to work with, I am doing an anti-diabetic study. So what will I do in an anti-diabetic study? I will basically bank on the glucose consumption, Permeas activity, which is happening, or the satellite cells, which I usually see if there's a high uptake or reduced uptake of the glucose. So accordingly, I will predict whether it's a good anti-diabetic molecule or no. If I am talking about an anti-inflammation or anti-inflammatory for I'm doing any other therapeutic molecule analysis, disease analysis. So in anti-inflammatory, I'll start targeting, you know, IL-6 receptors. I'll look for CRP molecules. I'll look for IL-3 molecules. I'll look for, you know, TNF pathways where I can predict whether it is working on the anti-inflammation or no. So depending on the goal, you know, your choice of cell line and your target receptors, which you have identified in using your in silico studies, which I think the next session is going to be in detail, I will be able to conclude my, uh, you know, the activity using the cell line. The choice of markers will change on the targets that I am looking for. All right. Now. With the changing trend, there has, uh, you know, developed a need of working on a three-dimensional based cellular assays in drug screening as compared to two-dimensional. See, when I say two-dimensional, I am basically talking about, you know, these culture plates, which I had shown, or the culture flux, which I discussed initially. But when I say three-dimensional, okay, this is usually a matrix or a polar, a porous material, you know, that is uh, allowing the cells, you know, to mimic more efficiently the in vivo environment. If you see over here, you can see the cell is having only an apical polarity. Soluble gradients are absent. There is only a, one layer of matrix which is being uh, exposed and the addition is also restricted. But if I do it, I cultivate my cells in a three-dimensional matrix. You know, I have no prescribed polarity. 
I have all soluble gradients present. I can see, uh, you know, spreading of migration sterically of my cells. So I'm trying to mimic more of these using different scaffolds or mesh. I can use collagen. I can use, you know, uh, different kinds of matrices that then will allow these organs, you know, instead to grow as a spheroid rather than a monolayer. See, if you see this image, this is a single cell derived colony of C6 glioma cell. Now, when I'm growing in a two dimensional uh, plate, it is growing as a flat cell. But if I grow in a three dimensional matrix, this is a kind of matrix that I'm looking into. This will then grow as a spheroid or you can see how the tissues or the cells, you know, interact in a tissue and an organ to form a meshwork and become a functional assay so if you are interested in completely simulating the in vivo system then the 3d culture systems are more better now you must have seen the different cosmetics uh, you know television or the radiological ads they show a model system wherein different layers are existing and how the cosmetic is penetrating similarly these 3d cultures you know become the model system of exactly how an organ would be in an in the body Okay, and if it is exposed to that chemical or a drug or a herb, how that chemical or a drug would pass through it. So these are very good model systems which are now used, uh, you know, are coming more and more or increasingly in the use of the cells as such. All right. So just as a quick recap, if I'm working on to the tumor assays, I can use either a migration uh, model i can use an invasion model where i'm checking the metastatic activity i can go for a trans endothelial i can use a spheroid matrix or a spheroid in suspension i can see 3d invasions and embedded cultures current trend is working on microfluidic model or you can say cells on the chip like your nanoparticles we have the cells or our organs on a chip with the virtue of even you know advent or working of the 3d printers we have these small organs which are developed which are now looking for their commercial implications uh this table is just a representative of which i was discussing in the diagram as such so each merit and demerit which it holds as such now i'll move towards you know few uh slides wherein I will be talking about the work which I have done in my laboratory with my research scholars. This was one of the cytotoxicity activity. Now, this is uh, an unpublished data, so I've not revealed the name of the extracts. If you see, these are the MCF7 cells, wherein A is representing the least concentration of the extract in micrograms per ml, while the D image represents the maximum concentration that we have used. So if you see gradually, you know, this was an anti-cancer product that we were testing. So when I'm seeing an anti-cancer product, I expect the cell concentration or cell viability to reduce. So as I'm moving towards the increasing concentration of the drug, in all the three extracts, we observed a very promising anti-cancer product. So a dose response curve is plotted with the help of the graph prism. We also did the wound healing assay. Now, the image that is being represented over here is basically the image that is um, done for the control cells. Okay. However, you can see the activity is also pretty slow. It was a time lapse video which we converted to the GIF. Now, this is another study by my other research scholars wherein they had analyzed the synthetic anti cancer products. Okay, which we received from one of our uh, esteemed team members. Uh, so we had all checked these cells on the HeLa cells. Now, what you see is the HeLa cells. If you see the image over here that is happening, is the morphology of the cancer cell how it is changing as such? So whenever I'm treating it with the drug cells, now you can see how the cell morphology is getting affected. Also, we did a dose, uh, dose response analysis to identify the IC50 values of the drug and the LD values of the drug. And the structure of the compound was studied using the FTIR spectrophotometry. Now, this is one of the work with, as I said, one of my highly esteemed team member, uh, that is Dr. Shishagar sir and Dr. Santosh sir, wherein we had done the anti-diabetic activity for a synthetic molecule that was designed and 
formulated for them. So we could see we had done a glucose update uh, uptake assay and we could see efficacy of how the drug molecule is working as an anti-diabetic molecule as such. Okay. Then this is a work by another student again wherein a synthetic molecule is analyzed and whether it is capable of inducing apoptosis or no was evaluated using the fragmentation assay. We have also done, you know, functional and toxicity or cumulative toxicity analysis of the fruit preservatives with one another colleague of mine within the department. Uh, so these are just reflexes like we also do the toxicity uh, with the food formulations or nutraceuticals, check them in vitro and then, uh, you know, uh, propagate it further for the clinical studies. So these are just glimpses of the few studies that we are doing in our department. And these are my team players. This is the esteemed partner I said twice that we are actually working with and really thankful to him for giving us the molecules. I am thankful to uh, the director of my department for always supporting, encouraging, trusting my in silico partner who does all the miracles of the in silico work of modeling, docking, target analysis, my uh, formulation partner who does the formulation for us. Uh, these are my pillars, basically. Now, he is my college mate. So wherever I am in a stress or I'm not understanding an assay or I'm facing any hiccups, I just bank on him. I have a discussion and then I have a solution towards the problem. She is my food formulation or uh, food sector partner, wherein she formulates the food products and uh, food preservatives or cumulative toxicity, food microbiology, and then check it on to the cell culture. She is my plant biology partner, wherein we synthesize the herbal products and uh, try to evaluate those products for their clinical implications. These are different research scholars who have worked, for whose work I have actually represented in this presentation. And this is my cell culture lab, where you can see all the enthusiastic students happily dissecting, you know, creating a dissection in primary culture from the chick embryo. So that's all. I end my session over here with all the happy animals who are saved with the in vitro culture technology. And that's why I kept the rat dance and the happy guinea pigs having their food as such. Um, we in our department uh, are really thankful to the MIT University for giving us an opportunity uh, to, you know, represent our work, represent our work ideas, represent our department at such an esteemed platform. I'm thankful to Santosh sir, uh, Shisagar sir, and the entire organiz uh, organizing team as such for giving me this opportunity. We at the School of, Di uh, you know, D.Y. Patel Biotechnology, we offer graduate as well as the postgraduate courses in different fields of biotechnology, bioinformatics, biomedical engineering, and uh, you know, bi uh, biomedical engineering and data sciences and food science and technology. Now, we also have a specialization in masters in the course of um, sorry, in the course of uh, pharmaceuticals and agriculture. So that's all for the day. If any queries, please let me know. It was a really nice session, ma'am. Uh, there are certain questions from the participant. I will uh, put uh, in front of you with your permission. Sure, sir. Sure. So, uh, first question is from uh, Mr. Mehfuz Rahman. He's asking whether we can use Tripan Blue uh, for doing anti cancer activity or not. Yes, it is a preliminary dye uh, testing which we do for, you know, answer checking whether the molecule is having any kind of effect as anti proliferation. If yes, then we progress towards, you know, MTT and other dye uh, sessions or you know, other functional assays. Hypen glue is always the first primary assay that we do. Uh, one more is there. Uh, how do one can calculate cytotoxicity in MTD assays? Sorry, sir, the voice cracked. I couldn't get it clearly. I will, I will repeat. Now. How do one can calculate cytotoxicity in MTT assay? Yes, so we usually when we are doing MTT assay, this is a kind of, you know, uh, spectrophotometric method wherein the cell viability, as the viability is reduced, the uh, read on the spectrophotometer will go down. So we usually calculate the IC50 values and evaluate this, this uh, 
cell toxicity so higher the toxic the drug lesser would be the viability uh last one which are the cell lines generally used for the assessment of a cytotoxicity of herbal extracts so it depends on the target of the herbal extract if it's a skin cell then we preferably you know work on um kind of a4253 or skin cancer cell line or you work on epithelial cell lines or uh, epidermal cells as such okay so uh, that's all uh, thank you very much madam for delivering such a valuable information and enlightening the participant on in vitro culture system and promising model for high throughput screening of natural and synthetic molecules further the way you threw light on the use of cell culture for studying clinical re uh, relevance will be very useful for audience i i would like to express my sincere thanks for your time spending and sharing your knowledge uh, thank you madam so thank you madam thank you thank you sir thank you Uh, now I request uh, Professor Rakesh Shekhe sir to uh, take a charge of further session. Over to you, Shekhe sir. Thanks, Doctor uh, Santosh Chajir sir. Good morning to all students, research scholar, and staff members from various institutes. I, Rakesh Shekhe, assistant professor from Department of Pharmacy. for me to introduce our third eminent speaker mr manoj damle sir who is going to talk on a topic novel approach for a drug target identification <laughs> yeah welcome sir uh, sir has done their b farm from pravara rural college of pharmacy pravara nagar in 2007 he has done his ms from hyper kolkata in 2009 He starts career as an assistant professor from MGM Institute of Biosciences and Technology, Aurangabad. Now he is working as an assistant professor in Srinath College of Pharmacy, Aurangabad. Sir has published and presented more than fifty research papers in various national and international journals. Also, he has published one book chapter. he has supervised 10 post graduate uh, graduate thesis under his guidance before beginning to session please note that if you are if you are having any questions for speaker please drop it in a chat box due to time constraint some questions will be answered by speaker also fill the feedback form whose link will be provided at the end of the session in chat box participant will receive the their email address now i request mr manoj damle sir to address the audience over to you sir thank you thank you shirke sir i am audible sir yes sir you are audible yes thank you sir uh, good afternoon all so it's my immense pleasure to a uh, deliver a talk uh sir my screen is visible yes sir it is visible sir okay uh, now it is in a full screen mode sir yes sir it is now in full screen right sir mukhi yes sir okay yes sir it, it uh, is moving sir yes okay thank you sir uh, thank you uh, dear principal sir convener uh, santosh chajir sir for inviting me uh, to deliver a seminar on uh, uh, the topic which uh, i am working from uh, so many years that is the drug target identification and uh, designing of the drug molecules uh, so the topic of today's seminar is a novel approach for the drug target identification in infectious diseases and uh, then later on we are going to talk about the homology model uh, so my uh, presentation will cover the introduction of drug target uh, characteristics of drug target type of drug target a method for 
uh, identification of drug target uh, then what are the different uh, validation techniques are there for drug target validation then we are going to start with the infectious disease now uh, because uh, we are uh, currently being associated with one of the very uh, what can say uh, a novel disease uh, which which a uh, human kind has been uh, not previously been encountered that is covid 19 that is also one of the infectious diseases uh, then we are going to discuss about the statistics related with the infectious diseases uh, then uh, we are going to discuss about the metabolomics in the drug discovery uh, then uh, metabolic pathway uh, and the drug target analysis then what are the approaches which are being uh, followed in uh, comparative metabolic pathway analysis then what are the current approaches in the drug discovery then uh, once we identify the drug target how the structure is been predicted and uh, in later on we are going to discuss one of the technique uh, that is been used for the drug target uh, drug uh, uh, target structural prediction is a homology modeling what are the steps are there and how, and how the validation of homology model is been done so first of all we will start with the some theoretical part uh, related with the drug target so drug target is nothing but an uh, biomolecules and it is in, intrinsically associated with a particular disease or a disease process and that disease or the disease process can be uh, corrected or the addressed by the a particular disease a particular drug molecule uh, in order to produce a therapeutic effect Uh, so identification of origin of the disease is an far most important thing uh, when we uh, go for the drug discovery process and uh, normally this uh, drug target are nothing but an biomolecules or they are the biological entity so they may be a protein they may be a genes uh, in the in, in a genes they may be a dna or the rna they may be a lipid or they may be a carbohydrate in nature then the next we will see what are the characteristics of the drug target uh, so as uh, i have told that the drug target are nothing but an biomolecules and these biomolecules has a specific site as we all know that uh, the uh, drug target are uh, by, are showing their effect by interacting with some specific uh, uh, substrate which are present in a in, in a body uh, normally when they show their action Uh, uh and when this interaction are been shown this interaction are mostly been shown at the active site or the binding site so this biomolecule has a specific site for the interaction uh then uh, when this biomolecule come close to a drug molecule or you can say the substrate or the inhibitor or the active activator they used to change their shape or the, they used to change their conformation now as this conformation is been changed in in that biomolecule it is mostly been responsible for physiological response and this physiological response is induced in the cell organ, organ tissue or the body status so as this uh, physiological change which are been happening in the in the molecule which mostly been uh, in happening in the in the body is mostly been responsible for regulation of various therapeutic effect in the pathological condition and uh, as the, the, the structural uh, changes are been happening in this biomolecule it is mostly been responsible for uh, expression of a particular uh, condition increase in the activity of the certain condition or the uh, or, or can say several structural change in the other biomolecule uh, in the pathological condition so these are the uh, you can say the very important characteristics of the drug target now this is uh, the pie chart which represent what are the types of the drug target uh, so this uh, pie chart has been taken from the, what are the currently available drugs are there in the market so uh, if you see around 45% of the drug target are the receptor that are, that is nothing but an gpcr 28% of the drug target are the enzymes then some of them uh, are the hormone and uh, their factor ion channel nuclear receptor dna and some are the other miscellaneous classes of the drug target now as uh, we we have just introduced ourselves to the drug target 
uh, what are the different type of the drug target, then we should know what are the methods are there for the drug target identification. So there are mostly three different techniques, uh, uh, techniques or you can say the methods are there for the drug target identification. So first is being called as the word direct biochemical method. So in this direct biochemical method, what is being done that the protein or the small molecule of interest or which we, you are uh, uh, you are uh, knowing is responsible for a particular kind of and disease condition is being uh, you can say labeled uh, by the radioactive isotopes and it is it has been incubated in the population and its uh, exact molecular label or the molecular changes what it is doing it has been identified and that has been known as direct biochemical method. The second method is being called as what genetic interaction method. Uh, so in that what is being done, the gene manipulation is been done in the cellular uh, um, uh, cellular level where a gene which has been responsible for a particular protein is being uh, choose for the uh, particular study and its modulation is been done and the role of that particular protein is being identified in a particular disease condition. The third is a called as what computational interference method, uh, sorry, in, inference method. So what is being done over here in this computational uh, inference method is that the uh, depending upon the, the, the uh, available data of a drug molecule, it's a particular pattern of the action is being uh, computationally stored in a computer and then it is being compared with the reference molecule. And on the basis of this, its action on a particular uh, disease condition is being uh, studied. So these are the method for the drug target identification. Then the next thing is the drug target validation. So once we uh, have identified the drug target, it is, it is very much important to validate that drug target in order to know that that particular drug target only is being responsible for a particular disease condition. So this has been done in a drug target validation and in this uh, drug target val validation various techniques are being used to validate that particular drug target where they used to study the protein structure, they used to study the expression profile of that particular protein uh, or DNA or the RNA. They also used to show, uh, study the genetic association, they used to do the uh, experimentation, uh, experimental assay uh, in the form of animal model or uh, in vivo, in vitro uh, gene knockdown assay. They also used to study the protein-protein interaction pattern by using various kind of software. They used to do the uh, pathway analysis, uh, biological uh, pathway or metabolic pathway. They used to analyze and they used to validate the that drug target which has been responsible for a particular disease condition. Uh, then uh, uh, now as we just been introduced ourselves to the drug target, uh, drug, uh, what are the method for the drug target identification and what are the method for the drug target validation. Now the next thing is, uh, is as these drug targets are being responsible for the disease condition, it has been important to know that what are the diseases are been there which are mostly been dangerous for the humankind and uh, 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 the data has been published by the CDC or you can say the WHO in uh, 2019 and it has been shown that uh, the 30% of the disease which uh, mostly been responsible for causing a, uh, causing a death to the human coin is an infectious uh, diseases. So it is very much important uh, to, to identify certain drug target uh, uh, in this infectious diseases and uh, we have to have a certain kind of a drug molecule in, our, in order to control, prevent or the cure that particular disease condition. So uh, it has been uh, important to know that what the infectious disease is. So infectious disease is nothing but a disease which is caused by the infectious agent. So this infectious agent may be uh, a bacteria, it may be a virus, it may be fungi or any parasitic species. And this infectious uh, disease may be get transferred from one person to another person. So it is a contagious uh, disease. And this is uh, the statistics related with the infectious disease, which has been published in 2019. Now this uh, whole statistic has been changed because of the uh, 2020 COVID we have now. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, this majority of the uh, infectious disease worldwide reported cases is because of the influenza. Then we have a tuberculosis, AIDS, 
डेंगू फीवर कॉलेरा मलेरिया अदर्स अदर इन्फेक्शियस कंडीशन वेर वी हैव मेजोरिटी ऑफ द केसेस and the the, the second is uh, the the column chart which represent the death uh, ratio uh, regarding this infectious diseases so you can see that the uh, the tuberculosis influenza aids malaria are the major causes for this infectious disease condition and this is uh, the current infectious disease we have uh, that is covid 19 and it's uh, the the how you can say uh, Uh, case statistics have been given over here so we can say the india is the second uh, country who has the most number of the cases uh, uh, related with this covid 19 and that is an infectious disease then uh, we we are going to discuss about the metabolomics in the drug discovery which has been related with the infectious diseases only so what the metabolism uh, uh, is actually it is a nothing but an a combination of the anabolic and catabolic processes and when this infectious micro microorganism uh, microorganism is been there for its uh, survival it has been important for him to have a different anabolic and catabolic process uh, in its uh, cell so when we study the scientifically overall uh, metabolites enzyme metabolic pathway present in an organism cell or tissue it has been called as metabolomics so this infection infectious microorganism generally exploit various uh, metabolic pathway or metabolic uh, pathway machinery in the host cell for its survival and it interact with these machinery in the host cell so several metabolic changes it induce in both in a pathogen and the host cell when it causes the certain infection then uh, when we study this metabolomics this as we know that the uh, this metabolic pathway which occur in a particular individual are mostly because of the certain kind of an protein or enzyme so this protein or the enzyme uh, which sequentially working in different metabolic pathway responsible for production of cellular compounds right so we know that one uh, particular uh, substrate is been converted into another substrate and likewise there are different type of an substrate are been formed which is responsible for transmitting or performing a important cellular function so it is very much important to know what are the metabolic pathway are been there in a in a particular uh, organism in order to study their function and when we study these metabolic uh, pathway in a particular pathogenic condition uh, patho pathology uh, in particular pathogenic organism this uh, uh, pathological organism which is been responsible for carrying a different metabolic pathway uh, novel, novel drug target identification is an important task in the process so one of the feature we can expect when, expect when we used to do this metabolic pathway analysis that we should have a good target which lack the similarity with the human enzymes right because if we have an uh, 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 the, the pathway or metabolic uh, enzyme which is been present in both in in pathogenic uh, organism and in the human then what may happen that Uh, the what the drug you are designing what the drug you are uh, identifying for a particular disease that particular drug may also can uh, do certain kind of an uh, interference with the normal human enzymes or the normal uh, uh, metabolic pathway which are been takes place or which are important for the survival of the human so Uh, it has been important that uh, when we identify a particular kind of an a metabolic drug target it should not have an any kind of an similarity with a human enzyme then the next thing is metabolic pathway analysis and drug targeting so when uh, we used to do the analysis of this metabolic pathway this metabolic pathway analysis should be restricted to the metabolites and enzyme which are responsible for particular metabolic pathway in a particular uh, uh, organism like where we here we are talking about the infectious organism so it should be restricted to the that particular uh, metabolic pathway which is been important for that pathology uh, that particular pathogenic bacteria or pathogenic uh, virus fungi or any other parasitic organism 
this metabolic pathway uh, analysis is, is will be and very useful as it allow for the determination of overall capacity of a particular enzyme which is responsible for controlling the various cellular activity in the cell and that is also been responsible for various genetic modification in the organism so this is an overall uh, representation of a metabolic pathway which is occurring in a, a, a microorganism and its name is e coli so you can say it is a very complex process uh, where uh, you can see that uh, there are various kind of an uh, metabolic pathways are been there and which is been uh, uh, interacting with each other there are various kind of an enzyme uh, there are various kind of an substrate are been interacting with each other and if you hamper or if you just disturb any of the pathway there might be a chance the overall metabolic system in a particular organism will going to get collapse so it is very much important that we have to select a particular drug target which is been unique to a particular disease condition so in order to do this study there are various kind of and databases are there Uh, uh, a few uh, prominent databases uh, names uh, i am giving over here that is a cake that is a kaito encyclopedia gene and genomics and second one is meta metasis database which is also been used to come uh, to study the metabolic pathway of a different individual uh, whose sequence or whose structures are been identified uh then uh, we are going to discuss now a very important uh, thing regarding this particular presentation is what are the approaches which are been followed for doing the comparative metabolic pathway analysis so comparative metabolic pathway analysis it simply means that we are comparing the metabolic pathway which are present in a particular uh, pathogenic individual and with the humans and the main aim of doing this is to identify the unique uh, enzyme unique proteins which are responsible for metabolism of a particular uh, condition or a particular substrate or a particular uh, uh, molecule which is been responsible for the survival of that particular pathogenic bacteria so for the selection of a particular target uh, or the disease or the organism we used to do by the literature search right so you might be interested in selecting a particular disease or you may be interested to select a particular organism so that information we will get from the literature uh, we uh, may, we may have an emergency condition like covid 19 uh, and uh, on the basis of that you can select a, a particular drug target or the organism then once this has been done then what we are doing we are doing the comparative metabolic pathway analysis and this is can be done by the database search so uh, in uh, in few of the my study i have used the metasis database in order to do the comparative pathway analysis so once we do this comparative uh, pathway analysis what we used to get we used to get an information about unique and the shared metabolic pathway which are present in a particular Uh, organism pathogen path, uh, pathogenic organism here we can say and this we inform this information we used to get by doing the uh, huge data mining so once we get uh, the information about this shared and the unique uh, pathway which are present in the particular uh, organism we used to do the ch choke point reaction analysis now what is the choke point reaction analysis uh is, a, is, is a, these are the specific kind of an uh, metabolic uh, pathways which are uniquely present in that particular organism and they are been important for its survival so there are various kind of and databases are there like cake database or you can say metasis database are there which has an a tool called as choke point analysis where it can uh, give you an information that what are the choke point reaction are there in the metabolism of that particular organism then uh, once we identify uh, the essential enzymes which are which are been uh, sorry unique enzyme which are been responsible for its uh, survival then we also used to do uh, another validation of the drug target and that is been called as what de search deg search so what is a deg search is a database of essential genes are been searched in order to validate 
what the target we have taken or the what the uh, the end result we have got from the this choke point reaction analysis the that particular protein or that particular uh, drug target is essential for the survival of that particular pathogenic or that particular organism or not and that we can get from the database of essential gene and this is how we used to do the drug target validation and on the basis of this drug target identification drug target validation we used to select a particular uh, protein as an drug target so this is an overall approach of comparative metabolic pathway analysis now we, uh, what uh, the this particular uh, flow chart i have shown you people that the same thing we are going to discuss it through a case study which i have done in my uh, one of the paper so the first thing is the selection of the drug uh, so selection of the target disease or the organism so this selection of the target uh, disease or the organism i have been um, i have been done for helicobacter pylori and hemophilus influenza so this helicobacter pylori has been responsible for multiple uh, multiple uh, drug resistance and the cancer whereas this hemophilus influenza is mostly been responsible for respiratory tract infection and it is one of the third most infect uh, dangerous infectious condition to an human kind so once we have selected this uh, 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 target organism what we have done we have done the comparative metabolic pathway analysis by the metasys database so in that we have been identified that there are 275 metabolic pathways are been present in the human and there are 1028 metabolic enzymes are been there in uh, the same uh, in case of an hemophilus influenza there are 189 uh, metabolic pathway and 843 metabolic enzymes are been there and in in case of an helicobacter pylori 144 metabolic pathways are been there and 570 enzymes are been there so this is what the information we have got after doing the comparative metabolic pathways then we have done uh, uh, the data mining and we have been identified the unique and the shared metabolic pathway which have been present in this individual so uh, in case of an human uh, if you just uh, look at uh, if you just compare it with the hemophilus and the uh, helicobacter there are 820 shared metabolic uh, sorry, sorry unique metabolic pathway which are present over here uh, then in case of an hemophilus influenza 296 and in case of an helicobacter pylori there is 172 unique uh, metabolic pathways have been there then these unique metabolic pathway which are which we have been identified we have done their choke point analysis in order to identify that that particular uh, metabolic pathway is been performed in that particular individual a certain indiv a certain uh, enzymes are been important for its survival or not so in case of an hemophilus influenza we have identified that there are 60 enzymes are been there which has been uh, act as a choke points and in case of an helicobacter pylori there are 24 enzymes are been there uh, so this is how generally the choke point uh, pathway are been uh, shown uh, so this is an choke point uh, where you can uh, say this is an uh, tryptophan biosynthesis pathway and this is an uh, enzymes which been act as a, a choke point uh, in order to inhibit this tryptophan biosynthesis so tryptophan bias uh, tryptophan biosynthesis is mostly mostly been responsible for phagosome synthesis and the synthesis of other essential proteins in the bacterial species uh then uh, we have again been done the drug target validation by deg search that is a database of an essential gene and you can see over here that one of the uh, the target we have been selected that is a pan c that has been responsible for the synthesis of the cofactor has been present and as an essential gene for the survival of this helicobacter pylori and this is uh, the selected drug target after the uh, the uh, the information of all the drug target identified choke point analysis and the database of an essential gene we have got that there are several like i have been just mentioned that there are 24 uh, choke point enzymes have been there which are important for the survival so this is a uh, pan see what i have shown just now in the table
and this is uh, the same data we have been published very very early just uh, after the completion of my uh, ms when i uh, when i have been joined to this uh, mgm institute of biosciences and, uh, biosciences and technology then we further elaborated this particular uh, drug target identification and uh, in 2019 we have been published uh, the uh, the elaborated study uh, by doing the molecular docking uh, pharmacophore based virtual screening molecular dynamics of the same target that has been uh, from the helicobacter pylori that is a pans uh then uh, once we have been identified the drug target now uh, what is been done in the current approaches in the drug discovery is that we are going for the two type of an uh, drug discovery process that is a structure based drug discovery and the uh, we can say ligand based drug discovery in structure based drug risk discovery mostly the structure of the target or the drug target is been identified and in the ligand based drug discovery the structure of the uh, basis on the structure of the ligand molecule the drug discovery is been done so this uh, structure based drug discovery which is on the uh, which is been done on the basis of the target molecule uh involve the ligand based docking or the molecular docking uh, qm mm uh, uh, drug discovery process homology modeling it also been um, uh, yeah, adopting then uh, fragment based drug discovery uh, or drug design is been done molecular dynamics is been done in order to study the stability of the complex or the stability of the drug target Uh, in case of an ligand based uh, drug discovery a pharmacophore approach or qsar the similarity search is been adopted so once uh, which uh, approach you are been following then the next thing is we are going for the lead optimization and once we have an very good uh, information uh, related with the lead molecule we we got an i can say the drug candidate so uh, in order to get an structural information of the target molecule that is a drug target uh, there are various kind of an structural prediction methods are been there and these uh, structural prediction method are generally been categorized into the two classes that may be an experimental method or it may be an computational method so experimental method generally the x ray crystallography nmr spectroscopy and cryo electron microscopy and the computational method are the homology modeling fold recognition and abinacio uh, modeling so these are generally been called as the physical principle method or the you can say the theoretical method so generally the advantage of this experimental method is that they has a very very accurate information about the structural coordinates of the uh, protein or the uh, drug type whereas uh, the advantage with this um, uh, computational method is that very quickly we used to get an structure for the uh, drug target or the drug protein now what is the disadvantage with this uh, experimental method is that they they, use, they 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 take so much of the time in order to get an a structural information re regarding the protein whereas uh, the disadvantage with this computational method is that they are been uh, not as accurate as the experimental method are so once uh, the structural uh, structure has been identified it has been stored in the pdb so pdb is nothing but an sort of protein data bank in which we mostly has a structure of the protein or the drug target which has been um, uh, predicted by the x ray uh, crystallography nmr or the cryo electron microscopy uh so today we are going to discuss about the homology modeling uh, so the homology modeling uh, Is, is is you can say the knowledge based method which predict the protein structure which is on the basis of existing protein structure information in the database so what has been happening is that here the what the structure prediction we used to do or the structure we used to identify a particular protein it has been predicted from the structural information from already known a protein structure which has been present in the database and what is the database is the pdb that is the protein data bank so this homology modeling uh, build the atomic model based on the experimental determination structure which is closely uh, related with the sequence level information with the uh, the template which has been present in the protein uh, data bank now what are the steps which are been involved in the homology modeling uh, so they are the first step is a target uh, we we have an what target sequence then we used to uh, go for the database search 
So uh, in order to identify the homologous protein, we used to go for the database search. So once we used to do the database search, we used to get an template, identification of the template we used to get. Then uh, in order to uh, have a maximum sequence similarity, what has been done, the refinement of the uh, sequence alignment has been done in order to align the maximum residues or the maximum amino acid which has been present in the target sequence with the template sequence. So once this has been done, the next thing is uh, building of the model framework. So, but when uh, before building this model framework, we should know or we should have a very good idea about the template structure. So, uh, this uh, template structure uh, alignment is been done like this. Right. So, this is a query sequence. Suppose this is a target sequence, and uh, this target sequence structure we want to uh, build. So, this has been built on the template structure. Right. So this is a sequence of the template and this is a sequence of the target. So there might be a chance that uh, there may be an uh, the alignment of the similar residue. Right. So this is K means the lysine and R means the arginine. So they are not the identical uh, amino acid residue, but they are similar residues. So they can be aligned. Right. So the identical amino acid uh, like V is being aligned with this particular V. So likewise, the alignment is being done. And if the alignment is not been happening, what has been done, the gaps are being inserted uh, in the sequence in order to have a very good kind of an alignment in the target sequence and the template sequence. Right. So this is uh, how the alignment is being done. And uh, in the alignment, what is being done, uh, they used to identify the identities. Now, what is identity? Identity means the, uh, the exact uh, amino acid which is present in the query sequence and the target sequence is being present. Right? So this is, uh, you can say the query sequence V is being present over here. And here also the V is being present over here. So it means the identity. Right? And uh, there are certain kind of an gaps also being uh, introduced. And for that, we have a gap opening penalty. We also have a gap extension penalty. Right? So, so its score also been uh, taken when the alignment score is being calculated. And the positive score is being calculated from the identity and the similarity. So here I have told you that this K and R are not being uh, identical, but they are the similar because they are both from the same class of the amino acid. So this is how the sequence alignment is been done in order to align the maximum amino acid residue from the target sequence to the template sequence. And likewise, the alignment is been done in order to have an uh, can say maximum alignment of the target amino acid residue with the template amino acid residue in order to build the model framework. So once the model framework is been built, what has been done that there may be a chance the certain um, a certain region in the template and the target are not being present right so likewise you can see over here right? so here there is an you can say the huge gap is there right? so uh, this region has been present in in the in the, in the template re region but here it is not been there right so this has been called as a structurally variable region right so this is a variable region so the, for this structurally variable region, what has been done uh, uh, with the help of certain uh, Rotamer libraries, certain Rotamer databases are been there. The structures are being, uh, you can say, uh, um, are being uh, predicted and that structural coordinates are being added in these uh, loops and the side chain or structurally variable regions. So once these structurally variable regions are being a model with the structurally conserved region on the basis of this, the model framework is been built. They used to go for the model optimization. So what is the model optimization? They used to check the, the feasibility of the structural coordinates, which is being assigned by the loops and uh, which is being assigned for the loops and the side chain. Now loops and the side chain are the generally the region which used to connect the two uh, alpha helix or the two beta sheets together. And what has been seen in this loop and the side chain region that the structural coordinates are mostly been changing frequently, right? And as they, they are been changing, they should be feasible with the natural phenomenon, right? 
right so for that what has been done the model optimization has been done so once the model optimization has been done finally we used to go for the model evaluation and once the model evaluation has been done we are using that particular homology model or the protein structure for further drug discovery or the drug design processes so this is what i am talking about uh, that is a key consideration for uh, selecting a template in the homology modeling right so we should uh, has an what can say uh, we should has an very huge consideration for the identity because if you have a very good kind of an identity the what the structure uh, for the particular model we are going to get is very good right and it, it does not have an any kind of an what can say uh, difficulty in order to pass the various model evaluation uh, criteria. So this identity is being categorized into the three level that is a mid uh, night zone, twilight zone and the safe zone. So if you have a very good, uh, if you have a very less uh, uh, identity, sequence identity, uh, less than 20%, uh, the sequence is generally been said as what midnight uh, zone. Whereas uh, if you have a uh, sequence identity in twilight zone, uh, it is in between, you can say 20 to 30 percent. It is being called as a twilight zone. And the safe zone means we have a very good kind of a sequence identity that is uh, above the 50 percent. And it may go to up to what can say 80, 80 percent, right? Not 100 percent. Because if you have a 100 percent of the uh, sequence identity, it means the structure of that particular protein has already been discovered. Right? So uh, when this uh, identity is been considered, the similarity also been considered because what has been happening that when the structural alignment or the sorry sequence alignment in the target and the template protein has been done, uh, we also used to consider the similarity where we used to consider the alignment for the similar amino acid residue. So there might be a chance the glycine may be uh, aligned with the alanine. Right? And when this alignment is been done, that is been called as what Sim similarity alignment. There might be a chance uh, this ASN has been aligned with the serine, right? Or histidine may be aligned with the lysine. Right? So that score, uh, that alignment score, has been considered for the final alignment score that has been calculated in the form of positive values. So this is uh, the key consideration while selecting the. Uh, template structure for the homology modeling from the uh, sequence alignment point of view because on the basis of this sequence alignment we used to uh, build the model framework uh, for the uh, target protein then uh, while selecting the template structure we also have to select we also have to look uh, regarding the some other parameter like atomic resolution right so atomic resolution used to give us an information about how good the unit latex of that particular structure is how compact or how well refined structure is so the atomic resolution in in the template structure should not be greater than 2.5 armstrong then r factor uh, that is also been called as what residual factor or the refinement factor so this refinement factor is should be in between 20 to 25 percent then missing residue, uh, uh, there, there, now what, what is happening when the structure of the any particular protein has been uh, identified or the studied by the X-ray crystallography, there might be a chance the certain amino acid uh, coordinates is not been fixed or the certain amino acid coordinate in information is not been available and that has been called as what missing residue. So this missing residue in a template structure should be minimum as minimum it should be there. And the next one is the B factor. So B factor is giving us an information about the stability of the protein or the target uh, sorry, template structure, and it should be a very good. Uh, uh, it should be an. Uh, it should have a very good kind of an stability, and it should be in between the 20 to 25 Armstrong square. So these are the kind of and what can say the information related with the atomic resolution, R factor, missing residue, and the B factor is already been given in the PDB. And when we are selecting a particular uh, template for the homology modeling, we should look at all these factor uh, as they are making uh, so much, uh, can say, a critical inference in getting the final structure of homology model. 
then these are the various kind of an online web servers are been there uh, which is been used for the homology modeling uh, apart from uh, paid software like we have an paid software we like science we have a schrodinger we have a sibyl uh, 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 is been there uh, MOE has been there. Right? So apart from this uh, paid software, there are various kind of an online servers have been there in order to do the homology modeling. So it, it is a, uh, uh, it, uh, you can use modeler, you can use the Juno 3D, uh, Esprit 3D, Trade, uh, 3D Swiss model you can use, you can use TPI, uh, TIP, uh, struct, uh, struct fast. Uh, server for uh, uh, getting the homology model but all these are what can say uh, 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 the online server where you cannot do anything you only have to submit the structure uh, you only have to structure uh, submit the template uh, sorry, target sequence and on the basis of the data which has been available in the database for the uh, template structure they build the uh, the protein structure and that particular protein structure they used to give as an end result. You cannot do anything manually and uh, and many of the time what happened that we are not going to get a very good kind of an structure through these online servers. Then the next thing is the validation of homology model. So once we have got the uh, homology model, the next thing is uh, how we can validate that particular homology model because uh, the, the that uh, the protein structure uh, whose uh, protein structure uh, which uh, I, 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 which has been we have been predicted by the homology modeling technique should be feasible should have a very good kind of an parameter as that of an biological molecule and for that we should have to go for the validations so this validation has been done by the various technique like ramachandram plot analysis has been done in order to uh, get an information about the confirmation of the protein uh, then we uh, used to go for the rmsd uh, calculation in rmsd calculation what is being done uh, the root mean square deviation has been calculated for the uh, backbone uh, C alpha atom which has been present in the protein uh, and for the all the atom and uh, it has been mentioned that it should be uh, it should be less as less it should be uh, so its, uh, its range is uh, from 0 to 0 0.5 Armstrong and next one is the energy so uh, the, the the there should be an what can say minim minimum energy for the protein structure uh, in order to uh, feasible or uh, in order to perform various kind of and biological functions. So if you look at the Ramachandram plot, Ramachandram plot uh, is look like this, right? So in the Ramachandram plot, it's been divided into the four corners, uh, which give us an information about the the region. Uh, uh, where we have an what can say a very good kind of an uh, the stability of the amino acid uh, residue from the stereochemistry point of view uh, 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 the, the region is being called as what uh, favored region and the disfavored region and uh, it has been estimated that around uh, you can say more than 90 percent of the residue if we are getting in the allowed region in the ramachandram plot then uh, our structural uh, validity of the protein is very good. So uh, it is not been visible clearly over here, but you can see uh, that uh, in this particular case of this M, uh, MTO, uh, TOR protein, around uh, you can say 90% of the of, uh, the amino acid uh, whose structure uh, is been uh, predicted in this particular protein are been uh, following the structurally favored region. Then RMSD deviation, just I have told you, a root mean square deviation we used to calculate it in case of an C alpha, uh, C alpha atom. And this is how uh, the C alpha atom representation has been done, which has been aligned with the template and the target uh, structure. And the deviation has been calculated. So it should be an, uh, as minimum as uh, it should be, right? If, if it is between 0 to 0 0.2 and strong, then you can say the maximum C alpha atom which has been present in the target and the template has a similar kind of an structural coordinate. Uh, all item uh, RMSD also been calculated and uh, when the uh, they are been superimposed, they are been look like this. Then the energy calculation also been used uh, is, is been done. Uh, 
uh, in order to calculate the global minima of the protein structure because we know that uh, there may be a chance uh, the protein may be present in a uh, various energy levels and in order to uh, has and what can say very good kind of instability our protein should be present to and global minima right so this has been done by the energy minimization or the energy optimization technique then non bonded interactions are been calculated in the protein structure because we know that there are various kind of an amino acid are been there and there there may be a chance they may have an various kind of a non bonded interaction so this non bonded interaction is been calculated from the from the online server uh, server that is been called as what irat and uh, what is been uh, seen uh, or here is that this uh, non bonded interactions are been scored right and if you uh, in this irat uh, software or irat online server and if you have a very good kind of an score uh, in this irat software or the server which indicate very good kind of an uh, structure we have right so uh, if if you have an uh, the score of above 50 the model is been accepted for the non bonded interaction and this is how uh, that particular irat result is been shown right so the this uh, uh, columns have been there which representing the uh, non bonded interaction of uh, each uh, amino acid right? and if you see this particular protein uh, the overall result is 79.0.32 which indicate it is a very good kind of an model then uh, we uh, we also used to calculate the compatibility of uh, atomic uh, model from the 3d uh, coordinate point of view when we are comparing this with the own amino acid sequence one dimensional and this has been calculated by the verify 3d and in verify 3d the score of the model is been ranging from minus 1 that means poor to a plus 1 that means that we have a very good kind of an uh uh can say compatibility in atomic model when we are compared with the 1d and this is how the verify 3d uh, chart uh, uh, is been shown uh, which which indicate that if you have a very good kind of an uh, score uh, near to plus 1 which which indicate we have very good kind of an atomic compatibility then uh, estimation of the error in the protein structure also been done by the various tool uh, and one of the tool is been called as what prosa uh, which giving us an score in the form of the z score uh, so this is how the prosa result we we used to get and if we have an what the score in the prosa minimum to uh, sorry as close to 0 uh, which means uh, the, our atom uh, sorry our protein structure does not have any kind of an yeah right so here you can see uh, the structure for the uh, the, uh, the z score for this particular model is around uh, minus 6 then all atom contact analysis also been done by the mol probity uh, uh, server which uh, identify is there any kind of an all atom contact is there because of the uh, uh, structural clashes in between the atomic density and this has been shown in this particular way in the mol probity uh, server this is how the clashes are been shown and its value also should be an uh, uh, as close to zero which indicate we has an least Uh, all atom contact in the protein structure and these are the various validation uh, tools are been there web servers are been there in order to validate the homology model so saves is there mol probity is there in order to uh, study the all atom contact prosa is been there in order to see the z score swiss ptb we were also been there uh, online also and offline also in order to Uh, see uh, the ramachandram plot in order to see the c alpha atom deviation project also been there in order to uh, give us and what ramachandram plot uh, so this is uh, on on the basis of what the uh, the aspect i have been just uh, highlighted over here uh, we have been uh, done the study and uh, in the last year only we have published this particular research article Uh, which cover all the aspect which i have been just talked and this is an one of the hot cited top uh, had hot cited article in the rsc advances and uh, this is another one study we have been done 
by following the same approach. So this is all about the, my presentation. Uh, so if somebody have an, any kind of an, uh, question, they can ask the question. Uh, thank you, sir, for your informative session. Now we are having some questions from uh, participants. Uh, Mr. Heman Chiki Hello, from... Sir. Yes, sir. I'm audible. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, one question is from uh, Heman Chikle, sir, from MS Gosavi College of Pharmacy, Nasa. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any significance of uh, Ramchandran plot in homology modeling? Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, what has been done that uh, the overall structural quality of the uh, homology model is being determined from the uh, Ramachandram plot. If you do not have an, you can say more than 80 to 90 percent of the amino acid which have been uh, been there in a structurally favored region, then there may be a chance there is some kind of a difficulty in the stereochemistry of the protein structure. So, Ramachandram plot is very much important in order to validate the structure. Okay, sir. Second question. Uh, how to identify potential site for ligand binding? Uh, sir, what has been uh, thing is that if we, we use uh, the paid software, the paid software already has a certain kind of a tool in order to identify the drug target uh, site. Uh, and in order to identify this drug target site, what is being done that the uh, the the the, uh, the protein who has an what can say very good kind of an cavity, generally this approach has been followed in the software. The structure who has a very good kind of an cavity or the uh, the shallow region has been considered as a uh, uh, region for the binding of a substrate or the ligand molecule. So there are various uh, paid software are there who already has an that particular facility to uh, predict the active site. There are various kind of an online software have been there like active site predictor uh, who can predict the active site or what are the possible active sites which are present in the that particular protein. Okay, sir. Uh, one last question from uh, Rutuja Devekar. Uh, why glycine is exception for Ramchandran plot? Uh, because what has been seen uh, in, in case of an, if you see the structure of the glycine, the glycine uh, does not have any kind of an, what can say, rotum, only the hydrogen atom has been there. And it is constantly, uh, what can say, flicking from, uh, you can say, its position. That's why it has been considered as an uh, exception in the Ramachandra. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for your kind words, sir. Uh, your thank comments you, were you. especially helpful to those doing research in the drug targeting era. Many students in PG and doctorate level were doing research on this topic and your talk seemed to provide much needed help to all of them. Surely it will help to our students, research scholars and staff members and those who are working or going to work on drug targeting identification. Thank you, sir, for giving your valuable time. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm very much thankful to uh, Principal Sir, uh, Shir Sagar Sir, Convenier, uh, Chajir Sir, and all the executive uh, committee members who have given me a chance to uh, share my knowledge, which uh, I am uh, doing from uh, many years in the this drug discovery and drug uh, designing process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir. Now I request Dr. Sandeep Solone, sir proceed for validatory function of today's national level seminar over to you uh, thank you uh, shirke sir uh, it's my honor to present vote of thanks on the occasion of the national level seminar on recent development in drug engineering organized by med institute of pharmacy bhojpur nagar city nasik uh, on behalf of Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Institute of Pharmacy and Mumbai Educational Trust, I offer high gratitude to all the eminent speakers for sharing their knowledge and expertise in today's session. I am very much thankful to Honorable Sri Chagan Bhujbal Sir, Chairman, Mumbai Educational Trust, respected trustees, Honorable Samir Bhujbal Sir, Honorable Pankaj Bhujbal Sir and our Chief Administrator, Dr. Mrs. Shepali Bhujbal Madam. 
I express my sincere thanks to respected Dr. Sanjay Shishagar Sir, Principal, Meds Institute of Pharmacy, for being motivational support to conduct such informative sessions for the well-being of students and faculties. I extend my sincere thanks to HR Department, EDP Department, Marcom Department, Civil and Maintenance Department of Bhujbal Nala City for every help they extended for the successful conduct of this event. Last but not least, I am very much thankful to our team members of Met Institute of Pharmacy, all teaching, non-teaching staff members and students for every support and help associated with the program. With these concluding words, I declare that the session is over. Thank you. All participants are requested to fill the feedback form. The link of the same is available in chat box. Thank you very much.